Hey guys, welcome back and Smith from Backbench Code. So today I'm going to start a new series which is Design to Development. We will be using the tool Figma to create the design first and then convert the design to a fully functional website using Next.js and MongoDB. And of course I'm going to use TypeScript. I love TypeScript. Okay, so what are you going to create? Have you watched Breaking Bad, the greatest TV show ever where a teacher turns into a monster? Yeah, it's a horror series. Anyway, if you have watched that, then you might remember the website which was created by Mr. Walter Stone to raise funds for his dad's cancer treatment. Yeah, I am going to rebuild that website. So let me show you what are you going to make. So here is the prototype. And by the way guys, even if you have not watched the show, it's not a problem. I am not here to promote the, promote the show. Okay, so just make this fit to screen. Yeah, cool. Go to home screen. Nice. So this is the website I am going to create. This is the home page. So help Mr. White and this is Mr. White. Okay. And here I have the navbar which is stats, which is the statistics of all the donations, every penny counts last five donations okay so this should be coming from the mongodb database and then click on donate here i can donate if i click on donate i should see a pop-up and pay five thank you love from heisenberg okay i'm going to create this donate box using paypal and then here is the family here are some of the statements from his family like jesse pinkman not his family member but much more than that then walter jr and the skylar and these are some statements and this should be coming from the database again okay this is also a call to action so if i click on donate it should be redirected to the donate box hmm so i'm going to create this design first in figma including this logo so let's do that so let's start the show it will be an advanced figma tutorial believe me okay so open the figma i have the figma installed in my windows machine you can also use the web version of figma so if you just go to chrome and then search for figma this is free and we love free stuff right just like this youtube video so please hit the like button so just log in here and you will be redirected to the Figma dashboard. Okay, cool. So first of all, let's create a new project. Click on this plus icon. This is untitled. Let's name this save Walter, please. Cool. So the first step of designing is we need to arrange the assets. So let me just get the assets. Mm -hmm. I guess this is in my desktop folder. And I have these two assets. One is the image and the second one is the logo. Here it is. Don't worry, I'll put all the assets in the description box. So just chill. Hey, by the way, what about this logo? Well, I'm going to create this logo in Figma, but at the end of this video. For now, just keep the show going. Okay. Cool. Delete this. Nice. Okay, so next step is we need to create the color palette. Uh huh. I have my color palette ready. So just copy this. Again, I'll put all the hex codes in the description box. You can just get that. I'll also put the Figma file. So second step ready. Now I'll convert each color to a separate color style. And what's the benefit of that? I'll show you in a minute. So just select one color. And then click on these four dots. Click on this plus icon. And here you can create a new color style. So I'll name this yellow highlight. This is the highlight color. So highlight create style. Now this style means it's a variable. What I mean by that? So if you just create a rectangle using this R. Now look at this. Here you can add this color style. How? Just go to these four icons. And then here you can see the color styles. Here I have the color style yellow, which is the highlight. Just hover over this. Click on this. Look at this. Now look at this. If you just modify this color style, it will affect all the elements which is using this color style. So just click on an empty space. These are all the color styles of this project. So just click on this icon, this edit icon, and then at the bottom you can see the hex code, click on this, and then you can change this. So just go for red, look at this, it's cool, huh? so it's kind of variable, just undo this, this yellow, cool. And now I'll convert all these colors to a separate style. So again just click on this circle, and then click on this four dots, click on this plus, and this will create a color style. Just name this, I don't know, background. Cool. Again, this gray, click on this plus, create color style. This is secondary. Cool, create style. And then this white, click on this, click on plus. This is a primary. Uh -huh. So now again, look at this. Just click on an empty space and you will see all the color styles. Highlight, background, secondary and primary. Cool. Let's group this nice and drag this at the top 
delete this rectangle i don't need that okay so i have my color palette ready i have my assets ready and next i need to choose a font so for the font i'll be using poppins just click on t mm -hmm. just write anything like poppins select this click on this text just search for poppins the font size is 100 for now okay so the basic setup is almost ready cool and next we need to create a frame so for that just go to this navigation menu and click on this frame you can also use the shortcut F capital F and then at the right you have all the predefined frames just click on this desktop and here I am going to use the full HD screen which is 1920 into 1080 and that is not available no problem we can draw that so just drag cool just go to this width at the right go for 1920 into 1080 cool i have my frame ready zoom out mr walter go at the top nice and next i'm going to add a grid so for that just go to the right click on this layout grid click on this plus icon so click on the settings layout grid settings here i can modify that i will be using the column based grid so just click on this drop down and here just click the columns the number of columns is 12 that's what i prefer you can also change the color so from red to something like you know gray uh, it looks nice yeah cool opacity opacity 10 is fine and then you can change the width margin i'm not going to change that the gutter is 20 that is fine cool i have my grid ready and again look at this you can also create a style for this grid and style means again you don't need to create this again and again it's a variable so click on this four icons and then click on this plus you can name this grid which is you know base grid create style cool okay so now we are going to create this navbar this cool navbar okay so just go to a project and then we can use a rectangle right so just click on this rectangle you can also use r which is a shortcut and then draw a rectangle don't worry about the height now and and the best part about the frame is it automatically masks the element so if you just expand this look at this the frame will automatically cut the expanded part okay so i have my rectangle ready and now let's add the color so go to this fill click on this four icon and from this color styles you can choose a color style click on this black cool okay so first of all you need to add the logo so just grab this logo you can copy this using alt so if you just hold this alt in windows so alt and drag cool uh -huh, resize that and again resize this using shift and alt shift and alt will resize this from the center okay that is cool just grab this nice yeah quite good okay and then just go to left just align this with the grid just leave this first column leave the first gutter and position this here and now we need to add the text so just select the text using t and then write what father husband teacher father husband oh my black teacher okay just select everything resize the font 240 let's go to this field click on these four icons just select this white cool uh-huh father husband and teacher mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. align there with the top and then just change the font to it to medium yeah it's cool align this at the top duplicate this okay this is the text and here I'll put save Mr. Walter. Save Mr. Walter. Cool. I need to reset this logo. Just hold the Alt and Shift. Designing is patience, guys. Aha, uh -huh, it looks nice. Cool. And then at the right, I'll put all the nav items. So you can just select the text and this is stats. Yeah. Let's drag this, put it here, change the text color to, I don't know, white. 
Just copy this, copy this again. Just select all these nav items and convert this to a group. So Ctrl G and now just align this with the right gutter and just leave this rightmost column. Your beta is running low. Wow. And then just change the text. This is donate. Mm -hmm. Align this. And the second one is what? Uh, people or family. Align this. You can also align this using the Figma tool and Figma intelligence. So just click on all this icon. You can actually click on this group and then at the top, at the top right, I should say, click on this drop down, which is the more options and then distribute horizontal spacing. It will give all the elements the same amount of space. Again, to make this group vertically centered, just click on this group, click on this rectangle, and then at the top, yeah, just select the vertical center, this one, nice. Should I make this medium, the font to it? Uh-huh, actually it looks nice. So that's it, that's my navbar ready. And now I'm going to convert this navbar to a component. What is the component and how does it work? I'll show you in a minute. So I select all the elements of this navbar, select everything including this logo, rectangle, and then make this a group. So Ctrl G, look at this group 2, just name this navbar, nice. And now just right click, click on this create component, the shortcut is Ctrl Alt K, and look at this, you can see this icon, this means this is a component. And now you can just drag this out of the frame. Why? Because I am going to use a child component. And how can you use the child component? See, if you just copy this master component, just copy this, this is a child component. Let's align this. Yeah, cool. Look at the icon difference. This is solid and this is light. Light or something like that. Now, hey, what's the advantage of the component? So the advantage is, now if you change the master component, it will affect all the child component. So let's say if you want to change the shape Walter to shape Walter white. Look at this. Okay, it will affect all this navbar. Make this A S capital. You don't need to go to all this navbar and change this to shape Walter white. You can just change this to master component. And the best part is you can also override that. So if you just go to the child component, let's say this is donate and you want to make this active element. So for that you can change the color. So this is primary, so primary to yellow. Look at this, it will not affect the master component, but if you change the master component, it will affect the child component. That's the idea. Okay. It's the home page, so just donate. Cool. So that's how component works. And if you just go to assets, here's a layer and the assets, you can see all your local components. Okay, click on this navbar and it will give you a navbar. Okay, so yeah, that's how things work in Figma. And next. Let's add the hero image. Hero image, my Walter White and the logo behind him. So for that, just grab this logo. Again, you can just copy that using Alt or Ctrl D, Ctrl plus D. Okay, just grab this logo. Actually, you know what? Just change the frame's color. So just grab this frame, click on this frame. And if you can't select any object from this dashboard, you can always select this from the layers panel. So click on this frame, cool. Actually rename this frame. This is home screen, home screen, cool. And then let's go to this field, click on these four icons, let's select the color, the background, nice. Uh-huh, add this logo here, nice. Just grab our Walter White, grab him, grab him, cool, place him somewhere, resize that, and by the way guys, if you want to maintain the aspect ratio while resizing this, you can do this using the key, you can also create the scale, so here at the top, this icon is the scale, so the shortcut is K. You can scale this. Uh, 625 is fine. And this is. Just make the grid off for a second. You can click on this eye icon. Yeah, it looks nice. 
so select the image and select the logo make this a group okay you can name this group hero hero image yeah quite good and now just add the lip text resize them resize him resize him cool and now let's add the lip text so at the left the select the text is in T and this is what help mr. white help mr. white select all click on this fill click on white cool align this with the left column resize the font so select the text make the font size around 90 cool just select only the help and then just change the font weight to bold cool help mr. white and next I need to add a paragraph just copy this text let's go to the project add a T again a text just paste this cool the size is around 34 yeah align this mm -hmm. looks good just change the just select this group and this at the right just hide the grid for a second click on this home screen uh -huh. base grid off cool so that's my home screen is ready huh not actually ready we can also resize that we can also resize that okay for me this is fine okay so again make this text a group this my dad is amazing and mr. white group uh, let's say what main text and next create this family screen so just go to his family where is the family here is the family okay so this is quite the same I have the nav bar and then I have this frame I have this text also yeah and then again look at this I can create this a separate component and then just use the child component so you're gonna make this a component so for that just create a new frame select the frame using F and then again this is you can actually copy that frame but I'm gonna show how component works so 1080 cool just rename this frame to what I oh, know family only family no. ah wow okay just change the color click on this four dots just select the background nice just add an app bar so just go to this assets you can just drag this nav bar here cool just align this if you can't align that's not a problem just click on this nav bar and then from the design you can just select this align left and then align top uh, that's how easy this is okay I can see that I need to give a little bit gap between this donate family and the stats for that I'll go to a master component just select this master component and then here you can just select this group and drag this cool again I told you you can override the child component for that you can just select the family okay you can change the color because this is the selected item because this is a selected page so click on this primary you can change that click on this yellow which is the highlight color cool and next we are going to add the text for that we can just copy this text so again alt and drag this is help mr. white now again just add the grid click on this family just go to this layout grid click on this four icons you can select the base grid yeah cool <laughs> beautiful okay just align the text with the left column just change the text this is family and friends family and friends cool just select this family and family and and click on this bold nice click on this paragraph and change the text to what I don't know notes from family and friends and next we are going to create this card okay this card so let's create one so for that I'm going to use a rectangle so R you can also select this from the nav item and then just create a rectangle align this 
click the size to 610 height is yeah you can zoom this using control plus by the way okay just change the color to fill this color is not actually listed here so for that let's get a color style so so just go to the top let's get a color palette let's create a circle using O mm -hmm. nice one select this change the color to 181818 let's make this a style so click on this four icon click on this plus icon and this is what card BG cool let's go at the bottom in our card select this card remove the secondary color click on this fill click on this four dot and just select this card BG cool let's add a border radius for that you can just drag this radius radius handler cool uh, let's make this little bit less yeah and next we need to add the avatar for that you can create a circle again you can add this circle from this nav item this ellipse or the shortcut is O just control alt and shift this will create a circle from the center mm -hmm. this one is cool nice and now we need to add the avatar image for that there is a nice extension is figma so just go to community of figma and the community is in home so click on this home and here is the community so click on this drop down click on this community yeah they have recently updated the ui and changed the layout okay so click on this search community reel or content reel something like that click on this plugin yeah content reel so just install this i've already installed that just go to the project and now after installing that click on this circle and right click go to plugins and then search for the content reel i have the content reel here click on this and it will open the content reel okay next 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 start and here you can see the full name date us currency us full address and then at the bottom you have the avatars click on this avatars and just select an image yeah that's it cool and here i have the avatar and now i'll add a border around this so just click on the stroke the border width is around three let's change the color click on the four icons this is again select the color style which is the yellow increase the stroke size uh, to five or four four is nice okay i need to resize the circle shift and alt and next at the bottom of this icon i'll add the name so again select the t the name is what jc it looks like jc okay let's select the text figma auto saves your work click on these four icons yeah jcp resize this make this horizontally center so just select this text and the image go to the top and make this horizontally centered yeah and next at the right i should add the notes so just copy the notes and some lorem ipsum again you can get the lorem ipsum from the content reels okay just just again add a rectangle i always use the box model approach everything is a box select a t and paste this here okay just click on this rectangle and remove the fill color remove this make this a group you go to its layers click on this rectangle and the text and make this a group ctrl g cool i have the ellipse here and then i have this jcp and i have this rectangle the full rectangle make everything a group because i am going to make this a component ctrl g nice so rename this to card okay and let's convert this to a component the shortcut is ctrl alt and k at the left you can see this it is converted to a component the icon look at this icon here i'll make this out of the frame and then create a duplicate of this which is a child component let's align this again duplicate this again duplicate the component 
okay select all the cards go to the top i need to align this to center it's already centered and just add same vertical space distribute vertical spacing cool this is also the same just align this nice align the text center huh cool and now let's change the content so let me show you a trick click on this two avatar okay right click and then go to the plugins click on this content reel select the avatar at the bottom it is selected random right so just make this random not a problem click on this apply all and it will give you random avatar close this look at this okay so this is a girl let's make this Kyler and then this one is this one is a girl but just make this Walter Jr. Walter Jr. And look at this the text is broken to fix that just go to the right look at this text portion click on this auto width okay cool and then you can also make this horizontally centered so just click on this text align center cool click on this sky layer click on this text align center let's remove this grid for a second what is family yeah looks nice and next let's make this donate page for that what do you need to create mm -hmm. we have this navbar ready we have this we have this text ready and then i need to just create this donate box okay let's do that so let's copy this frame let's click on this frame Control D, yeah, I have this frame ready. Okay, so I have this snap bar. This is not family, so just override that. I remove this highlight. Oops, just click on this family, just make this white. Uh -huh. Click on this highlight, just select the white, and then this is donate, so just select the donate. Click on this primary and make this highlight. Okay, uh, you need to change this text, so this is you can help yeah you can also help me by clicking the like button you can help so just grab this you can make this regular cool and then this paragraph so just copy this up and just add this paragraph here let's make this you can medium nice to save please send your contribution to our fund and keep the series alive Walter White is not important the series is important okay just grab all these cards delete that nice and now we need to add the box so for that use the R box cool little box select the fill color to to the card color click on this four dot click on this card BG this is actually nice this border radius to 18 nice okay zoom in and just add the donate box so text at the top this is donate box box select the text change the text color to white uh -huh. click on this four dot just select the style I resize the font to around 60 yeah, looks cool we are going to modify that don't worry just border radius to I know we don't need the border radius come on border radius always make the thing sweet but this series is not sweet okay then I have a little paragraph so just copy this text any amount will be appreciated any amount any amount will be appreciated just make this font around 70 and just align this any amount will be appreciated cool and next I need to show three buttons so again create a rectangle make this dollar five so add the text dollar five align this horizontal and vertically centered just make this rectangle change the background color this color is not in our style so 2f 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 I am using this color only in this donate box so I don't think I need to create a style 
color is has 2f 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 okay the text color is again white just click on these four dots actually you can add this shadow color or secondary color yeah it looks nice mm -hmm. let's see let's resize this circle press k ctrl and alt nice yeah click on this text and that rectangle make this a group duplicate this ctrl d again nice select all this 5 5 5 and make this horizontally centered select all click on v and just drag it'll add the same horizontal space looks cool huh and next let's add the donut button so for that again create a rectangle it's all about the box model guys change the color to highlight which is the you know, yellow select the text and write donate the text size is around 30 30 or oh, not 20 why am i 32 aha uh -huh, cool 32 select the text make this medium select the text click on this auto width cool aha uh -huh. don't it don't worry about this box mm -hmm. make this horizontally centered nice <laughs> looks good huh okay now we need to align that so donate box donate box i'll make the font medium cool Let's shift this to the top okay any amount will be appreciated also shift this to the top cool i have all these buttons here let's change the text to 10 oh make this auto width cool and third one is 20 auto width click on this auto width cool uh -huh. select this donate make this button a group click on this text and the rectangle click on ctrl and g and make this a button I also need to add the button on the home screen. I'll copy this button from here. The extra height of this text because of the font. That is okay, not a problem. Just select all these buttons. Make this the bottom. Make the button. I am more a developer than a designer. Uh -huh. Looks cool. Select every item and make this horizontally centered. All the items are horizontally centered, so not a problem yeah now select this button copy this go to the top you can also make this a component but does not really matter okay click on this frame ctrl and v oh where is my text uh -huh. select this button here copy this go to the home screen paste here just add this donate align this with the left Uh, select everything click on left cool i have some space okay make this donate i can also add some you know, later spacing so just select this donate and then let's go to its text click on this later spacing and then make this yeah that's cool five percent nice and then i have this page which is the statistics and you know what you should try to create this page again just duplicate a page and then you will get the navbar just override the navbar to stats and then you will get this text the text is ready just create a text last five donation and then this donation card just create a component just add a border just create a rectangle add border add the text make this a component and just duplicate that quite easy okay and now let's create this model so for that again i'm going to create a frame so if the size is around 960 and the height is 590 yeah just you know, let me so how this should look yeah it's cool let's click on this frame let's change the color let's change the color to the card bg just add some border radius just click on this frame and then at the right you can control the border radius so the border radius is around 
15 yeah cool and now we need to add some icons so here i have this paypal icon and then i have this hat icon and there is a nice extension available let me show you again just go to a community and just search for icon the name of the icon is iconify okay so just search for this iconify and then here mm -hmm, let's say paypal yeah i have this paypal just drag and drop cool very small paypal where it is yeah here it is select this change the color to again the highlight color resize this just press k laptop just add the donation amount whatever is selected by the user so five hey where is my text yeah five dollar select the text go to fill and add the color style the highlight color make this bold or semi bold medium is fine just resize the font mm -hmm. 50 cool and next i need to add a hat so again just right click go to plugins go to iconify and here just search for a hat hat here is my hat hat cowboy just copy this select the hat close this iconify just go to this field click on these four icons this style just select the highlight style nice you can do it okay just drag this mm -hmm. resize i need to add some text like thank you love from heisenberg so again add a t look at this heisenberg is in bold of course heisenberg is bold and then i need to add a button so you can just copy the button copy the button oops 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 oops, oops. just select the card or the frame just paste this and this is something like you now pay five dollar cool medium to same world yeah same world is fine so that's my model is ready yeah looks nice so i've created three pages you will create the fourth page this is really easy okay and now i'll move to the prototype so for that just click on this prototype let me zoom in click on the navbar main component click on every text and here you can see this plus icon you can just connect this with any screen so just drag drag this arc and this is donate right so i need to connect this with the donate screen where is the donate screen here it is and as soon as an arc is connected you will see this interaction details and here i have this on click like like when to add the page transition and then i have this navigate to like open overlay i am gonna show you what is open overlay and then look at this animation so i have this instant smart animate dissolve move in move out push in you can see this push slide in slide out you know how it works but this smart animate Oops, just select the smart animate it will animate only those part of the screen which is changed so this is quite fancy and then you can go to a nav, nav item just click on this family just drag this arc and connect with the family screen cool and then at the stats i have not created that that is fine and next look at this donate and by the way look at this as this is a master component and you have connected all these arcs with this master component and because of that if you just go to any screen and just click on this nav item look at this the arcs are already connected right so that is quite good and now just click on this donate button inside the home screen then let me zoom in go to prototype uh-huh why can't i see the arc you have the arc for the text but i don't have the arc for this button wow anyway not a problem just delete this donate and let's create a rectangle look at this go to design again click on this design just change the fill color to this add the text something like donate font size to 60 okay cool yeah nice resize this click on this donate and the box 
make this a group again go to prototype yeah, I have this arc click on this arc drag this to a donut screen where is the donut screen here is the donut screen nice and then everything is fine I should navigate to the home screen if I click on the icon right so just click on this nav item not actually nav item but nav bar click on this nav bar the master component click on this icon and here is the arc select this and drag this to the home screen and look at this every animated smart animate and then I have this model ho oh ho so for that just remove this model from this frame I need to show this model if I click on this donate so just go to this donate I have this arc just drag this arc and connect this with this model model or model whatever and now I need to show overlay effect right so for that just click on this navigate to just select this open overlay and here you have all the positions like centered left aligned bottom aligned and there is the option like close when clicking outside check mark this add background behind overlay also check mark this and now you have the colors so just make this around 50 or you know, 40 and then at the bottom you can see the animation like instant or dissolve move in I'll select move in and move in from bottom to top so this icon yeah after providing all these features figma is still free <laughs> yeah so that's how i'm gonna animate this model okay close this and then i guess i'm ready click on this play icon and this will take around one minute to set up okay nice website huh <laughs> click on this options click on this fit scale down to fit aha uh -huh. click on this icon oh this is not going to the home screen why i don't know click on this family this is going to a family nice again click on this donate yeah look at this smart animate effect but why this is not going to the home screen something went wrong i need to fix that but click on this donate button look at this wow click on outside the model and this is closed oh nice man let's fix the bug so just go to save wilder please go to prototype go to header Mm -hmm. this is this is on drag no this is on clicked what happened this is not this is already selected on click just close this so it, if you just close this negative it will remove the effect tangle what about this click it is going to the where man oh something went wrong so again just remove this just select this icon and just drag this arc to the home screen cool what is going wrong yeah cool on click go to the home screen and this is smart animate smart animate matching layer click on the smart animate let's see so let's click on this play cool make this fit to screen scale down to fit whatever now just click on this donate I have the donate box click on this family I have this family and then we just click on this icon it should go to the home screen nice click on this donate yeah cool the donut button is really big let's fix that let's go to save walter please mm -hmm. let's go to design this is around 200 and the height is around you know 10110 the font size 30 yeah cool mm -hmm. make this auto width it looks nice okay mm -hmm. yeah looks nice cool so this is my design ready and next I'm gonna create this logo this logo is really simple so Figma is not a logo creation tool but you can create that look at this logo first this is W and then I have this extra line here so for that I can create a you know I can create two V and then overlap each other and then I can just create two lines one is this vertical and the second one is this horizontal let's do that uh -huh. let's select the T and just type V let's increase the size select K mm -hmm, cool just select the font a roboto yeah and then increase this increase this increase this 
change the font weight to thin or light light is fine okay just duplicate this v overlap this uh -huh, cool Oops. don't release the alt yeah nice i should make this thin yeah thin cool and now let's add the extra lines for that so for that just select the line so click on this drop down and select the line okay just drag a line if you hold a shift it will maintain a straight line so don't hold a shift we don't want straight line mm -hmm. yeah quite good okay just go to the stroke and just increase the stroke around 26 okay thinner align this cool next i need to add another line so just again press l and just add this line here again the stroke size is 27 cool uh -huh. zoom in add this that somehow attach this to line cool so that's my logo ready almost ready i need to change something mm -hmm. yeah seriously cool okay now just select everything like everything from this logo all this line one line two and the v just select the v where is the v yeah i have this v here just cut this out and paste it at the top okay select everything make this a group and then from this top just select this union section it will make this a single shape and now again you can resize that so just press k you can resize that you can export this out click on this export you can make this a svg export png svg anything but i want to change the color so just click on this fill click on the styles for dots just select the highlight color that's it let me show you what's the advantage of the styles so here if you just want to change the styles look at this if you just want to change the highlight color notice all the colors of the page okay mm -hmm. just let me move this side by side why is my family this is not actually family this is donation okay now just change the color styles let me show you let's make this green look at this something is wrong and that is because this logo is not using the color style so just click on this logo just change the fill to color style yeah that's it again just go to a nav item just go to a master component select the logo click on the style and add the fill nice and now again let's have some fun click on this highlight text color the textile i should say and then change this look at this now just imagine if you don't use the color style and you want to change the color palette in that case you need to change all the colors of every screen right so yeah cool so that's it guys that's my first ever figma tutorial i have really enjoyed that so if you have enjoyed this if you think you have learned something please hit the like button please show some support and in the next video i'm gonna convert this design to a fully functional website using nextjs and mongodb to be honest i'm more a developer than a designer hey guys welcome back i'm Swift from backbench for so this is the second part of the series design to development in the last video we have designed the ui so if you are interested in ui design please check out that video so in this part we are going to convert a design to code using nextjs and tailwind css and then in the next part i'll add the database and implement the logic Okay, so let me give you a quick demo about the website. Okay, so at the top I have this navbar, a logo and then this random text and then three nav items which are donate, family and stats. And then inside this home page I have this hero image. Don't worry, I'll provide you all the assets. And then at the left I have this help Mr. White and then a call to action button which is donate. So click on donate, it will redirect you to the donate page. Nice, so I have this PayPal button. Just click on whatever amount you want to donate like $5, $10, let's say $5. Click on PayPal. Now here is the tweak guys. I have not really implemented the donate button because in India the donate button is not available. Okay, but I will provide you all the logic to implement a donate button. Don't worry. 
okay so i have logged in as sumit and then as you can see this is shift to so i have implemented a checkout checkout of paypal which is also necessary stuff anyway click on this pay now this is a sandbox account by the way nice and then just go to stats you should see sumit five dollar i should show a dollar anyway i have this top donator which are the top five donators and then this total donation which is just the sum up of all these donations okay then just click on family again guys this data should be coming from the mongodb database and then click on family look at this i have this notes from family and friends so jesse pinkman walter jr and uh, skylar white this is a small app but i have really planned this app so that i can show you all the implementation of nextjs using typescript okay so it will be fun Okay, so to get us up and running, I have created this basic boilerplate for this app, which just includes the setup files of Tailwind, TypeScript, and Next.js, just so you don't have to write those boring stuff from scratch. But if you want to create the boilerplate from the scratch, I'll put the link of one of my video in the description box. Anyway, just go to this repository. I'll put this link in the description box, and then from this branch dropdown, click on this setup. That's it. Okay, just copy this URL. And now just go to your terminal and run npx create next app the app name which is save walter make sure there is no capital letter and then just pass hyphen and e this is for example and then just put the url you copied okay press enter that's it okay done so just cd to save walter change directory yep just open this in your code editor i'll be using vs code so code dot cool not cool my vs code is damn slow oh so let me first talk about the folder structure first of all just go to its source okay inside this source you can see this component and the pages if you are familiar with the react.js folder structure this is similar to react so inside this source you can have this components folder and then this pages folder okay inside this components i have this component which is delete.tsx cause i'm going to delete that okay and then inside this pages i have this underscore app.tsx which is the root of our page so every page component will be rendered through this underscore app.js or underscore app.tsx i'm using typescript okay and then inside index.tsx this is nothing but our home page so as you can see, I've rendered this delete component, which is coming from this component slash delete. And what is this at the end component? This is called path alias. I'll be talking about this in a minute. Okay, so this is all about the source. Now I need to find my charger. Cool. So every file inside this pages folder will be a separate page. What I mean by that is if I create a, you know, something like donate.tsx, this is a separate route. So I can just go to donate. And it will render my donate page. So RAC, which is a shortcut to create a functional component, and you can just pass donate. And one thing to notice, this should be a default export. Now, from a component, you can have a multiple export, but from a page, you should have a default export. Okay. Now let's just go to this API folder. So every file inside this API folder will be a separate endpoint. What I mean by that is, this hello.ts is an endpoint. Let me prove that. So for that, just run the server. So control J, it will open my inbuilt terminal in, inside VS code. And then just run npm run dev. That will run my development server. Cool. Let's go to your browser. Local 3000, refresh this. Okay, so this is a boilerplate for Next.js with TypeScript and Tailwind CSS. Then this is a source based project directory, TypeScript path mapping already configured, and then some tips. Okay, I'll be talking about this in the later part of this project. So, what I want to prove is just go to this API class hello and it should return you John Doe because this is an endpoint. Yeah, this is a John Doe. Nice. Yeah, really nice. And then I can again just go to donate, which is a page which means it's a separate route because it is located inside the pages folder okay inside this donate oh why it is not showing up because the color is black okay so this is a donate now let's go to home page let me just continue the folder structure 
Okay, so inside this pages, I have this API folder and then underscore app.tss, donut.tss, index.tsx, all are done. Okay, inside this components, I have this delete.tsx, which is just a component. So here it is written, this is a boilerplate and all this stuff. Nothing to describe about this delete component. Done with this source folder, cool. Now just go to the styles folder. Inside the styles, you can have module based CSS style. So global.css, inside this global.css, you can see that I have imported the poppins font so that you don't need to find the poppins font. And then I have set up the tailwind. And to set up the tailwind, you just need to install some packages. So just go to package.json. Inside this package.json, look at this, I have installed this tailwind CSS plus GIT. GIT means just in time, which is in beta version. Okay, but it's very cool. And then add this auto prefixer, this post CSS and this tailwind CSS. We need to install these four packages. And then just go to this tailwind.config.js. Here yeah? we just need to parse these files. So inside the source folder, all the files which end with the TSX and TS extension, I'll parse all these files. What I mean by parse, by the way, parse means remove all the unnecessary CSS which is not used inside your project. So it will be done during the build time and it will remove all the unnecessary CSS. And then you can see that I have all added all the colors. So this is yellow, this is the same yellow I have used in the highlight color in my UI design. And then this gray, dark and light. Okay. Nothing else. Cool. And then just go to postcss.config.js. Here you can see that I have added this plugin which is Tailwind CSS plus GIT. Cool. That's it. And then at last, you need to import all these three directives, which is Tailwind Base, Tailwind Team Components, and Tailwind Utilities. Okay, cool. And then inside this body, I've set the background color and the font family pop-ins. That's all. Yeah, that's all. So I'm done with the source, I'm done with the styles. And then just go to public folder. Inside this public folder, all the files inside this public folder will be served as static. Now what I mean by that is, just look at this favicon.ico. Now just go to your URL and just type favicon.ico and you should see the image. Yeah, so this will be served as static files. And then inside this assets, you can see that I provide all the assets I'm going to use inside this project. So this jc.jpg, which is the image of jc pingman and this logo.png, which is the logo of our project. And then Skylar White. Oh, Skylar. And then just go to Walter Jr. He's having breakfast, by the way. And then our Heisenberg. Okay, so I'm done with this assets folder. Done with this public. This node module, you know what it is. Come on. And then I have this models. So this models means basically all the model I'm going to create through Mongoose will be located inside this models folder. We are going to see this in the next video. And then this middlewares. So all the materials will be located inside this middleware and then this libraries, libs. So all the utility file will be located inside this libraries folder. Library is not libraries. Okay. Just go to this connect db.ts. It will be used for the db connection. So anything else? Yeah. This env.example. So inside next.js, you need to put all the environment variables inside env.local file. So just rename this env.local. Cool. And then this git ignore. And then this tsconfig.json. Inside this, you can see this path. This is a TypeScript path alias. So base URL is dot. Look at this. I have created a alias path which is at the component slash star. So all the files inside this components folder will be mapped to this source slash component slash star. Now just because of this path alias, we don't need to import any file using the relative path. So what I mean by that is, just go to donate.tsx, let's say I want to import, you know, something like, let's say, this delete component, so import, if I don't use the path alias, I need to import this through, I need to import this using, you know, delete from dot dot slash component slash delete, right, but now I can use this add that symbol, because this add that component is mapped to this source class component, right? So I don't need to go to this source and all this stuff. This will be served as absolute URL. Okay, this is quite handy. More clean import statement. 
Hmm, so that's all about this folder structure. See you in the next video where we will start the coding. So bye. So in the last video we have completed all the setup needed for our project and in this video we are going to create the layout. So let's first create this navbar. So at the left side I have this logo and this text, father, husband and teacher. And then at the right side we have this nav items. So if I click on this donate it will be redirected to a donate page, same for the family and same for the stats. Okay, so what do we need to do? Uh, we can create this a div and then just convert this div to a flex box and then just put justify space between oops yeah then just put justify space between and then if this item is active we'll change the color to yellow hmm we can do that so let's go to your code editor let's create a component named navbar and notice that i have deleted this delete component cause i had to delete this delete component oh navbar now the tsx remember to put tsx okay so rafc it will give me a functional component let me just zoom in cool so convert this to a flex box flex that's all in tailwind okay i'll add other classes later and then inside this i need to put the logo so i'll put the logo inside an anchor tag and then just put link so let's import that let's see my auto import can do my job nope or the import stuck sometime so import link from next link cool okay i just need to put this href inside this link so href is home route cool okay so inside this link i'll put a div and then i'll put the logo so image now this image is located inside my public folder which is a static folder so inside this public i have this assets so i can just access this using slash assets and the name of the image is logo i guess yeah logo.png logo.png cool i'll add some class name to maintain the height so class name will set the width to 12 which is around 48 pixel and the height is also 12 and to maintain the aspect ratio i'll put object fit content that's it and let me just put this side by side so that we can see the design this is my completed project and my current project is running on localhost 3001 uh, I am getting an error that delete.tsx does not exist yeah I know so just go to index.tsx I guess yep yeah I don't have this delete.tsx and let me just also import this navbar navbar dot no not navbar dot just navbar should be auto imported from components slash navbar and look at this add that components it's really cool huh? okay so let's go to navbar.tsx and let's continue the design come on and by the way guys i'm recording this video for the second time because first time my obs studio was lagging my screen recorder always creates some problem okay so inside this div i'll put another div which will contain our text i don't know why my image is lagging everything lags when i start you know, recording something so inside this div i'll put two paragraphs one is father, husband and teacher and the second one is save Mr. White save this okay so that's all about this left side for now just close this anchor tag and let's put the nav items so inside this wrapper div I'll put another div which will wrap my nav items so div where is the closing tag okay so this div will also be a flex box so class name flex I'll put space between these items around 6 unit so space x6 and this is x because the flex direction is row that's it for now and then inside this I'll put the anchor tag and the link so anchor tag the link okay the first one is donate I guess or family whatever donate not only donate the slash donate bro okay and the text is donate donate also make this letters uppercase so just go to its wrapper div and make this uppercase cool i'll also check if this item is active in that case i'll change the color to yellow so for that i can check this inside this anchor tag let's say class name a conditional class name i'll check if the path name i need to import the path name somehow <laughs> so if the path name is donate in that case 
I'll change the color to text of yellow, the default yellow. Else null, nothing. Okay, I just need to import the path name. The spelling is also wrong. So let's go to the top and import path name. And how can I get the input? And how can I get the path name? For that, I need to import the use router hook. So let's import this. So import use router. Oh, first of all, let's mention the package. This is next slash router. Auto input is also not working. I mean, so just input use router. Cool. And then inside this use router, just call this hook and it will return me an object and I can destructure the path name. Path name, not path name. Cool. Now I'll copy this and cut a couple of times because I have three nav items. Okay, the second one is what? Uh, stats, I guess. Statistics. And the each ref is stats also a text is stats and then this is donate so just select all the donate and make this family or people family cool save this let's see and by the way guys tailwind is a mobile first CSS library so just keep that in mind okay I can't see my link but I guess yeah so I just need to change the color so for that just go to this wrapper div the topmost div and change the color to no, white text white cool make this justify in between so justify between also make this item center so that it gets vertically centered okay that's it just go to this anchor tag do I need to do anything yeah I need to put some space so again just go to this wrapper div put px3 so so horizontal padding 3 unit save this but from the large screen, I want padding around 20 units. So LG is the breakpoint PX20. So it means it will get 3 unit padding up to large screen. And from large screen, it will get 20 unit padding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm using two VS Code extensions. Let me just show you. So let's go to these extensions. The first one is Headwind. If I can search headwind, it will sort your CSS classes alphabetically, so it's better for the clean code. Oh, I need to plug in my charger first. So just install this headwind, and the second one is, I guess, tailwind intelligence or something like that. Yeah, tailwind CSS intelligence. So just install these two extensions. Okay, meanwhile, we got our design. Mm -hmm. So just go to this anchor tag and just target this div which wraps our image and this text just target this also make this a flex box i always follow the box model approach so just give space in between these items around two unit or put four unit whatever make the cursor pointer and items vertically centered so item center now what about this text i don't want to show this text if this is rendered in a mobile screen so for that just target this div Remember, Tailwind is a mobile for CSS library. So for that, every class will be applicable for the extra small screen. And then we can just add the breakpoint and do whatever we want. Okay, so we want this hidden for the extra small screen. And then from the medium screen, I want to show this to medium block. Cool, huh? Save this. Mm -hmm. Just add some padding around you know, PY to unit. For the wrapper div, the whole number. Let's make this larger and let's see. Mm -hmm. I just need to increase the font size for the large screen of the nav items. Okay, so let's go to this mm -hmm. wrapper div which wraps our nav items. Yeah, this one. I just need to restart my VS code, I know. So after finishing this component, I restart my VS code. Okay, so for the smaller screen, this is text based. And then from the medium screen or for the large screen or from the medium screen. I want the text to be 2xl or xl is better. Let's see. Uh -huh. Cool, it's better. Okay, cool. So that's my nav bar is ready. And let me just quickly restart my VS code. Because this is lagging, lagging, lagging. Okay, done. I guess it's working fine. Cool. So let's create this home page. So just go to this index.tsx 
but before that let's create the layout so just cut this nav bar and just go to this underscore app.tsx remember this underscore app.tsx which is the root of our project so i can create the layout here okay so first of all i wrap this component with a div and then set the height to 100 viewport height so for that the class is a screen in tailwind i also make the text white globally okay here i'll put this nav bar let me just auto import this beautiful and then inside this div i'll put another div and this div will have a fixed height so style just use an inline inline style and the height is around 90 viewport height because i'm gonna give this nav bar 10 viewport height so for that 90 plus 10 is equal to mm -hmm. i'm genius in math so just put this component inside this div that's it uh-huh let's remove the semicolon let's put this div here save this code and now just go to snap bar and give this uh, 10 viewport height so let me just copy this inline style let's go to snap bar.tsx and by the way guys i'll put all these codes in the description box so if anything goes wrong in your code you can just check that out cool the height is 10 viewport height aha uh -huh. Cool. And now just go to this index.tsx and create the home page. So what do you need to do inside this home page? Let's see. Okay. So at the left side I have this text which is help Mr. White, then this paragraph and this button. And then at the right side I have this hero image or hero, Mr. Heisenberg. Okay. So you can just make this a grid because this is also mobile responsive. And then just divide this grid into two halves. One half for this text and one half for this image. Mm -hmm. And then look at this. We can make this a tailwind component because this text, this help Mr. White is similar to this, uh, you know, just go to his family. It is similar to this family and friends, the style and all. Just go to his stats. This is also similar to this uh, total donations. No, this is not similar to this total donation, but this is similar to this family and this donate. So you can make this a tailwind component and we'll see how to create a tailwind component. It's not a react component, but a tailwind component. Okay, so just go to his index.tsx and let's create a grid. So just go to his div. Creating grid in Tailwind is really simple. So class name, grid, that's it. Let's define the column. So from the medium screen, I want grid columns 2. Also add some padding, so P5 and from the large screen, padding is around you know, 24 unit. So PX24 horizontally padding. So inside this div, I'll put another div. Actually, I need to put two div. Copy this, copy this one for this image. So let me just comment out. And this div is for the text. So inside this div, let's put a age one, which is this one, this help Mr. White. So let's copy this, put it here, and put this help inside a span because I need to style this in a different way. Span. Oh, I met. Oh, my. What am I doing? Help Mr. White. And then after this age one, I'll put a paragraph. Come on, Emmett. Let's just copy this paragraph. So my dad is amazing. Yeah, your dad is really amazing. And then this button. So again, button, which is donate. Okay, just add some class name. First of all, set the width to 32 unit and add some padding. Background color is yellow, so BG, I mean the default yellow. I don't want any outline on focus, so focus, outline none. So this means on focus, outline is none. Change the text color to black, cause my global color is white. Also increase the font to it, so font medium. Mm -hmm, that's it for now, just see the text. Let's go to this local 3000. It should refresh, oh wow. Okay, let it refresh, meanwhile add the image. So just go to the second div and we are going to use the next image. This next image gives you a lot of feature. It gives you lazy loading. Second, it converts your image to a WebP format. WebP, which is much, much smaller in size than the original format. Fourth one is you can control the quality. And if you want to know more about next image, I have created a video on next image. So please check that out. So next image, just close this image. Okay, I just need to increase the font size again. 
cool so here again you can just put the source this is nothing but a wrapper of the normal html image tag so you can just pass all these properties and that will forward this to the image tag okay so the source is not a curly brace this is again coming from the assets folder so assets the name of the image is i guess hero or walter yeah walter.png walter.png and then you also need to pass some properties so height which is a fixed height so around 640 and width is around 6, 670 i don't know around 700 or something like that and then next image gives you a quality around 70 by default i want to change the quality to 100 i also put another property which is object fit so to maintain the aspect ratio i'll put object fit which is content the TypeScript is not giving me any suggestion because I have not imported the image. So object fit content. Let's import this image. My auto import should do my job. Nope. It never does the job. Okay, so let's import this image from the next image. Import image from next slash image. Cool. Let's see. Cool. So let's design this text. Mm -hmm. first one is help mr white white <laughs> not white okay let's target this div the wrapper div and add some class name so i want this to be a flex box to so flex but the direction is flex column the space between these items is around 5 unit so space y5 again this is y because the flex direction is column mm -hmm. justify center i guess you know the css part okay just give the padding around 3 unit at all side and then just target this age one add some class name or add some classes i should say okay that size of this text is around 4 excel and i'll increase the font weight to medium cool but from the large screen or from the medium screen i'll increase the font size so this is text 6 l or not 6 l 6 excel and then this pen just target this pen this is nothing but the font weight bold so class name font bold you can change the color to yellow so font bold cool let's target this paragraph this is what text base for the smaller screen but from the large screen i'll increase the font size so text large lg cool save this mm -hmm. better i just need to put some space between help and mr white and I need to design this donate button. So let's go to its code. Mm -hmm. This is donate. Uh, this is help. After it's help, just put a space. Cool. Then target this donate button. So this is width 32, but from the large screen, I want to increase the width. So LG with around 48. Add some later spacing. So tracking wider. And by the way, guys, you can actually hover over this class. And see this property so later spacing around 0 0.05 em p2 means padding 0 0.5 rem font medium means font weight 500 okay i'll make this uppercase so uppercase i love tailwind so let's save this let's see uh -huh, what about the font size increase the font size so text to excel save this and look at this the headwind always sort my class i don't know how it sorts but it sorts okay save this and refresh the page cool so that's all about this home page and now i'll convert this text to a tailwind component so for that mm -hmm, just copy all these classes let's say for this div copy all these classes and now just go to this global.css and here look at this layer component just comment out this so basically we are going to create these components inside this layer components so that we can override this i'll show you okay so here you need to put the class name so this is let's say text block wrapper that's it put a curly brace and here you just need to put apply and then all the class name paste it that's it let's make the second one so text block you know title text block title apply just get this class name from the header cut out all the tailwind classes go to global.css paste it here 
nice anything else mm, just copy this let's say text block subtitle just copy the paragraph class this is text base and from that large screen this is text large uh -huh, not snap bar bro and just paste it here cool so that's my components are ready and now just go to index.tsx and add this classes so first one is text block wrapper it should give you suggestion i don't know why it is not giving the suggestion let's copy this look there is a typo this text block wrapper and then this age one this is text block title and the third one this is text block subtitle that's it save this mm, it should be same refresh the page great and now just go to the statistics page let's see what we have in my statistics and by the way guys if anything goes wrong in our project we'll fix that in our refactoring part okay so inside the stats i have this top donators and then this total donations right okay so this is basically simple i have this top donators and then i have this component which is the name and the donation amount and then the left side i have this total donations inside a box and then it's total donation which is the age one or age two and then again inside that i have this box which is 27 dollar the total amount let's do that let's create a page inside these pages let's name the stats or tsx close the window this is the rafc which will give me a functional component okay so here again i need to create a grid so for that i'll just copy the grid from this index page let's copy this whole div actually i remove all the unnecessary stuff go to stats let's override this div paste this here cool okay so i have this grid p5 md grid columns lgpx24 that is fine and then this div this is text block wrapper this is also fine this age one this is text block title that is also fine but i remove this text and this is what total donation cool not cool what is the spelling of total donation yeah. and then i'll remove this p tag and this button i don't need that instead i'll put a span that will hold my total donation let's say 120 dollar that's it for now let's remove this image the next image we don't need that okay so here i just need to put all these donators so top or last five donators let's put whatever you want and then here i just need to render a component do i need to create a component or i can actually make this a div i don't have any functionalities here i don't have any functionalities here so just create a div and render this okay so i need to render five div for that i'll create a dummy array so dot 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 using a spread operator the array constructor just put the length this is five that's it i can just map over this array just grab the donation and return a div cool inside this div i'll put a span which is the name so let's say sam or soul please soul we want a better call soul season six and the second one is let's say one that's all for soul okay uh -huh. just add some class name on this div so class name it has to be flex let's change the background so bg gray dark remember we put this class in our tailwind config file add some padding so px6 take size around you know, excel and put some space between these items so justify between cool save this let's see what we have hmm not bad let's design this left section first okay cool 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 just close the second div okay, so first of all i'll give this wrapper div a full height so age full which is height 100 percent and then i'll wrap this text block wrapper with another div so just create a div and then just put this text block wrapper div inside this div cool save this and now just target this new div and add some class names so you have to create this flex box so flex the direction should be flex column justify center 
of course space between the items is around 3 unit and then target this text blocker wrapper remember i told you that we can override this we are gonna do that so you want to change the background color so bg dark gray i also control the width of this div so width is around 10 by 12 so this means so this means width is around 80 percent or 83 make this horizontally center so mx auto that's it for now just target this total donation the age one and add more class so text yellow just change the color add margin so margin bottom 4 unit and from the medium screen just change the text size so text is around 5 excel and for the smaller screen this is text 2 excel cool just copy these classes and apply this for this second div and target this age one and add class name this will have the same classes great mm -hmm. almost done i just need to add some space between these items and just need to target this span okay let's do it mm -hmm. just target this span this is really simple increase the text size so text is 2 excel padding x is around 6 unit py is around 4 unit from the medium skin i want to increase the text size so text is 3 excel change the background color so bg gray light cool save this and then just target this div and add classes just make this a flex box the direction is flex column I mean the direction is column justify center space between these items is around 3 unit and make this take center cool let's see mm -hmm, I just need to add some padding and what about this pan need to fix that okay so just target this div so padding y is around 4 unit that's it target this pan oh this is not bg dark gray this is bg gray dark that's why the color is not showing anyway mm -hmm. on this box i just need to give some padding first just target this box this one this bg gray dark one mm -hmm. from the medium screen this is py 14 save this also at item center let's see let it refresh that's it this page is ready and now i just need to create this donate page and the family page okay i can also see a bug here which is family is in yellow why so we'll fix that and the video is also getting longer so i'll create this donate page and the family page in the next part and i will also fix this bug so see you in the next video bye so in the last part we have created this home page this nav bar and the statistics page right okay so in this video we are gonna complete this ui design so we need to create this donate page and the family page okay so let's see the final product what do you need to create okay so here is the final product this is my home screen let me just go to a donate screen here it is so at the left side i have these two texts and i have already created a tail in components for this text so this will be pretty simple and then at the right side we have this donate box okay so inside this donate box we need to create this amount and every amount will be a separate component and then under this i have this donate button for now this is just a dummy donate button but later we are going to convert this to a paypal donate button not a donate button but a checkout button because donate button is not available in our country in india okay and then just go to its family page okay this is also pretty simple at the left side i have this text again the text are ready and then at the right side we just need to rank the three items now again let me remind you this data should be coming from the mongodb database but for now just for the ui design part we are going to create a dummy array an array of objects and then we'll just map over this and render the array okay pretty simple so let's first create the family page so just go to your code editor okay so first of all we are going to create the family page so inside this pages folder let's create another file which is family dot tsx remember to put tsx okay just create a functional component rafc oh it's not working yeah cool export default family nice okay so we need to create the grid first 
this grid and we have already created a grid for the other pages so let me just copy this mm -hmm. just go to statistics okay let me just copy the whole div and then we are going to modify this just copy the whole div go to family.tsx just override this div cool save this for now close the sidebar cool okay so we have the wrapper grid this div and then under this i have this flex div we don't need that so just remove this div also remove the closing div cool save this okay so under this div i have this text block wrapper we need that and then i have this age one which is the text block title okay so we just need to change the text so this is what this is family and friend and the family should be wrapped with a span because we are going to change the color family and friends nice let's go to a span and add some class name this is nothing but font bold and just change the color of the text so text yellow a default yellow we don't need this span instead we need the paragraph so p just add the class name text block subtitle so class name text block subtitle it suits for the suggestions i don't know why it is not showing the suggestions okay the paragraph is let me just copy this notes from family and friends go here put it here nice the left part is ready and then on the right side i have this wrapper div that is fine and then under this i have this age one and this array so just remove this array and the age one cool okay so here we just need to map over an array and render the items so for that let me just create the array so just go to a libraries folder inside this libs folder let's create another file which is data data.ts not tsa because this is just a normal typescript file okay so let me just copy and paste a dummy array because i don't want to waste your time okay so here it is just save this cool so the name of the array is quotes and this is an array of objects so every object holds three properties one is name the name is Walter Jr. Second is picture URL, which is just mapping to this asset slash Walter Jr. JPG. So just go to your public folder. Inside this public folder, just go to assets. Inside this assets, you should find this Walter Jr. JPG. Okay, so this is just pointing to this image. And then I have this text, which is the actual text. So my dad is amazing, it's funny, blah blah blah. Okay, so that is one object. And then I have the second object, which is JC Pingman. Again, the picture URL is jc.jpg, this one and the text my teacher is amazing okay and third object is skylar white the picture is skylarwhite.png and some text like my husband is amazing overall the heisenberg is amazing okay look at this i'm also exporting this out so that i can import this okay cool but hey i'm using typescript so let's create an interface so let's go to libs again let's create another file which is types this will hold all the types now just go to libs come on types.ts cool so i'll just export this out the name of the interface is quote or i quote i means interface q with capital q cool so it should have a name which has to be a string and this is required and then i have this picture url which is also a string and then i have this text which is also a string and that's my interface ready i was exported this out so just go to data.ts and just add the type here after this quotes just add the interface so i code should be auto imported from the library slash types or from dot slash types uh -huh, at the rate library slash types is fine this is also correct by the way but i prefer at the rate library slash types because this is more readable cool so this is an array so i code array nice now if i just change the name to something like name it will give me an error like hey typescript is not satisfied again i cannot add any additional properties like surname no 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 it is not allowed hey it's not allowed okay so that's the beauty of typescript so now let's render this array so just go to family.tsx Hey, by the way guys, I'll put the GitHub link in the description box. So if anything goes wrong in your code, just check that out. Okay, so just go to this div. And inside this div, we are going to render this array. 
let's put a curly brace because we are going to execute some javascript common react so the name of the array is course should be auto imported from library slash data this time it has imported from at the library slash data okay so course dot map get every code and render a div inside this div we are going to add one div for the picture and the name so image this is again the next image should be imported from next class image okay so the source is what code dot picture url yep the width is around 60 60 pixel and the height is also 60 because we want to give this a border radius so add class name rounded full which is the border radius 50 percent nice also you are going to add the object fit so object fit is cover and increase the quality so quality is 100 done with this image under this image we'll set a span that will hold our name so span just code dot name I could have restructured the name picture URL and the text but that's fine class name like MT1 margin top 1 just to give some space that's it for the left side of this card just add the paragraph at the right side so after this div just add a P that will hold our text so code dot text cool that's it save this we just need to add some classes for the wrapper div but let's see what we have now mm -hmm. refresh this okay got something nice 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 need to remove this background color and then at the right side we just need to add some classes for the wrapper div okay mm -hmm. just go to his wrapper div this one let's add some class name or add some classes okay just flex flex direction row by default add some padding at all side just override the padding horizontal px6 this space between the items around 3 units so space x3 font size small so take small but from the medium screen I want to change the font size to font base which is the normal font size Oops, not font base text base come on so me just change the background color so bg gray dark and just add some border radius so border surrounded lg that's it just go to the second div and just add another class which is which is flex ring zero it's a popular property of flex so by adding this property this div this image and this span will not be shrinked so if the size of the screen is smaller this will not be shrinked this paragraph will be shrinked okay mm -hmm. that's a normal css by the way and text align center that's it yeah i guess that's it so just go to this first div and remove this bg gray dark we don't need this nice save this let's see not i have added the text center in the wrong in the wrong div no okay so first of all just go to his wrapper div this flex and flex column and remove this justify center we don't need that and then to make this image and the span align center we need to wrap this next image with a separate div so let's do that create a div and wrap this image with this div cause next image adds an additional relative div so we just need to add this separate div mm -hmm. refresh this yeah nice and now we just need to make this vertically centered mm -hmm. okay okay so just go to this wrapper div first and just add some gap between the elements so gap is around 5 unit and next for the second div just remove this item center we don't need that just remove this width we also don't need that margin x auto no nah. padding y14 nope these all are copied because we have copied the grid from this you know statistics page so we just need to remove this remove these classes and then the age one mm -hmm. text to excel mb4 we don't need this just remove all of this and just remove this text 5xl 
for the age one this is mb4 text to excel that is fine span is fine paragraph is fine cool and then just go to his second div and this is not text center it should be justify center come on flex and as this is flex column so justify center will make this vertically center justify center that's it save this yeah cool better just go to donate page and now we need to create this donate page so you can just see the final product let's go to donate this is pretty simple again at the left side we just need to create this text and then on the right side we just need to create a div inside this div this text this paragraph or whatever span and then we just need to create a separate component for this amount and then just a normal donate button okay we can do that just go to donate page close these statistics close these types close this data just create a new file which is uh donate is ready oh donate page is ready so again let me just copy the grid the whole div actually from family.tss this is pretty similar copy the whole div just go to donate.tsx and add it here cool mm -hmm. save this let's modify this okay first one is the grid that is fine and then i have this text block wrapper cool and then i have this text block title that is also fine and then i have this span and then just remove this text let's make this you can help right so we need to add the you can at first so you can help so please help please also help me by liking this video just go to this paragraph and change the text to to say please send your contribution to our fund and keep the seeds alive nice let's go to the second div I don't want this div to be flex box so just remove all these classes and then just remove this inner content so course dot map to this wrapper curly brace just remove this cool okay so first of all let's create the donation amount component right mm -hmm. this one so what is actually happening if I click on this donation amount this one is selected if I click on this five this five dollar is selected and also it is changing the color color of the border okay so just go at the top you can create a separate component file but as this component belongs to this particular page we are going to create this component inside this page so again rafc the name of the component is amount or donation amount whatever it will be a functional component so just add the type function component just add the properties inside this generic this angle bracket is called generic in typescript by the way so what we actually want we want the amount which should be a number and then you also want a function which will set the amount so set amount and as you can see it will be a state aha uh -huh, not a number bro it will be a function so function and then the actual amount which is a value let's say which is also a number cool and then just destructure the properties so amount set amount and value Mm -hmm. so let's create the state first go to his donate component the parent component and just use use state use state the name of the state is amount and the setter function is set amount just remove this initial state import the use state from react of course and the initial amount is ten dollar cool nobody is going to donate ten dollar okay so inside this div let's render this component which is what amount yeah amount just hover over this look at this what are the properties i can pass so amount it will also give you the suggestion so amount is the state amount and then set amount which is the setter so set amount and then the actual value so the first one is one dollar so this is a number Let's copy this copy this the second one is five dollar and the third one is ten dollar okay so let's add the functionalities for this amount component go inside this div or you know what actually make this a span because we don't want to make this a redundant div span not swan span okay so first of all we are going to render this value so this is value let's see if it is working or not 
Mm -hmm. Let's go to his local 3001. My dog is barking. Refresh the page. You can help. No, 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 no. Why? This is all in yellow. Oh. But look at this. I have this 1, 5, and 10. Okay. Before I add the functionalities, let me just add the styles. Else it will be difficult to change the functionalities because we also need to change the border color. Okay. So, first of all, what is going on here? What is you can help? Okay. So, let me just modify this. Mm -hmm. This is you can help. Yeah. But just remove this text yellow. Just remove the text yellow from the edge one. And then just go to second div and add some styles. Okay, so first of all, inside this div, we need to render a separate div that will create our box, this donut box. Okay, this this whole donut box with a background color. <laughs> so div, inside this div, mm -hmm, let's add some class name, like flex, of course. And then the flex direction is column. The background color is BG gray dark. Add some space between the items, so space Y4. Cool. Add padding horizontal around 4 unit and padding vertical is around 6 unit. Oh, PY. And just make this item horizontally centered, so item center. And item center means align item center and as this is flex column, so this will be applicable for the cross axis. So item center is horizontally centered. Okay, so inside this div, let's put a H1. It will hold our text. The text is what? Donate box. Simply donate box, right? Let's copy this donut box, put it here, add some styles, class name, hmm, just make this text block title, the tail in component we have created, title, cool, under this just create a paragraph and that will hold the text, hmm, any amount will be appreciated, just so, just donate, 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 that's it, paragraph, just add some class name, Again, text block subtitle, just put it here, cool. Under this paragraph, we will create a div that will wrap this donation amount. So just copy these three amounts and put it inside this div. Okay, just make this flex and the direction is row and the space between the items around 9 unit, 10 unit, just make this rounded figure, 10 unit, <laughs> okay, under this div, just create a button, and we are going to add a PayPal button, so just add PayPal button, that's it, okay, let's see what we have, mm -hmm. we need to make this whole div horizontally and vertically centered, for that we can add grid, but hey, no, 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 this is not title, this is subtitle. Let's see. <laughs> Better. So just go to his wrapper div and make this grid. And to make its direct child horizontally and vertically centered, we can add place item centered. But remember, it has to be the direct child. Okay, so just go to his child div and add the rounded border. So rounded large or MD. Cool. Save this. Hmm, this donut box text is looking bigger, but just, you know, leave that for now. Let's create this amount button. So if I click on this, it will be set and the color of the border will be changed. So just go to this amount component here, just add class name. It will be a conditional class name. No, 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 no double code. Just put a curly brace. Okay. So inside a template string, let's add the default classes. So px4 unit, py2 unit, in case the text size, so text large, let's change the cursor to pointer and change the background color to light. Cool, so that's all our default classes. And now, if the value is same as the amount which is currently set, in that case, I'll change the color. So inside this template string, just add a dollar and curly brace and check if the amount is same as the value, in that case, just add a ternary operator. We are going to add a border and the border is yellow. That's it. Else, nothing. So colon and nothing. 
just a space or whatever okay so that's our classes and then let's add the on click handler so on click we are going to execute this set amount so inside an arrow function set amount and the amount is the value that's it save this okay let's see refresh the page just click on 5 yeah 5 is selected click on 1 1 is selected yeah cool let's increase the width of this box so with full or with around 10 by 12 so tar target this box with bg gray dark that's with 10 by 12 and just make this horizontally centered so for that let's use mx auto save this and also do one thing let's go to this amount component and make this value dollar so one dollar two dollar three dollar five dollar ten dollar whatever yeah looks much much better so yeah we are almost done and what is wrong with this you can help mm -hmm. let's go to this you can help this is takes two excel from medium skin this is five excel just make this six excel let's see and that's better you can help click on the stats and notice that guys the bug i was talking about in the last part is automatically fixed i, I mean seriously i am not joking i've just opened this project here and this is fixed <laughs> that might be a refresh bug okay so that's it for the ui part in the next video we are going to add the functionalities so we are going to add the mongodb then the paypal button this incremental static generation server side rendering static size generation we are going to see all this stuff Okay, so see you in the next video. Bye. So in the last part, we have completed the whole UI design of this app and now it's time to add the functionalities. So let's start by adding the PayPal button. And again, I repeat, we are going to implement the checkout button because in India, we don't have the access to the PayPal donate button. Oh, by the way, guys, if you have not watched the previous parts of this project and want to continue this project from this part, in that case, you can just clone the specific branch and then follow along. I'll put the repository link in the description box. Okay, so first of all, just go to the browser and search for PayPal. Go to browser this is paypal let's go to official site which is paypal.com what is the official site come on this is the paypal.com you need to create an account i already have an account yeah here it is just let me log out yeah you just need to create an account using this sign up uh, make sure this is business account because you are going to receive the payments and then this is very simple step let me click on the login i guess i know my password yeah. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. This is seven zero whatever. Click on login. Great. After the login, you just need to create a sandbox account. And PayPal gives you a default sandbox account. But if you want to create one, you can just search for this. So PayPal. This is the easiest way. PayPal dashboard. Yeah, PayPal developer dashboard, something like that. PayPal developer dashboard. Okay, just search for this. Okay, here you can just go to this application PayPal developer or directly go to this sandbox account. Just click on this sandbox account. Great, look at this. I already have my 7 or 8 accounts. Yeah, look at this. PayPal gives you two default sandbox accounts. But if you want to create one, you can just click on this create account. And then just select what type of account you want. The personal means the buyer account where you can only pay. And the business means the merchant account where you can also receive the payment. Okay, just select the country or region. I'll go for business. I recommend you to create two separate accounts. One is personal and one is business. And then click on create and that's it. Yeah. And then if you want to change something, just select the account, click on these three dots and then select view slash edit. Yeah, you can just change the name here. Email ID, password. Just click on this edit. And then let's say the name is what? Eden Hazard. So there's a match between Chelsea and Real Madrid, so let's go for Eden Hazard. Hala Madrid, Eden Hazard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Click on save. Great. Successfully updated information. You can also check the API credential, which you don't need. Funding, settings, you don't need this. Okay, just close this. And now you need to create an app. So just select this my apps and credential from the side menu mm -hmm. just click on this create app and name this 
let's say save walter youtube oh save walter youtube great app type is merchant because i'm also going to accept the payment and then it is already selected as sandbox account just leave this default click on this create app and that's it it will give you a client id which is needed to connect your app with this paypal account yeah look at this this is the public client id so just copy this and paste it somewhere i mean save this somewhere yeah comment this out okay so you got the client id and now we are going to integrate this using the paypal script which is also the simplest way so you can just go to google and search for paypal script the search for paypal script it will give you the javascript sdk i just select the first one and by the way guys i'll put all these links in the description box if anything goes wrong in the process you can just check out the description box yeah okay so just grab this script we need this one just copy this okay cool just go to your code editor again just go to a donate page and here we just need to somehow inject the script now here's the gotcha in next days we can import head component and inject separate data for separate page so you might think that we can just simply add the script in the head component and that will work in fact i also tried that but for some reason the paypal script was not working fine so you need to take the lemon way to inject the script and that is just create a script and append this to the body it seems confusing don't worry okay let's do it so inside this donate component let's create a function which is let's say add paypal script so const add paypal script let's create an arrow function and now let's create a script so const script up is document dot create element let's create a script great just set the source is script dot source just set the source the script we have just copied just the url grab this put it here just replace the client id with your client id i got my client id here just copy this or cut it out and by the way guys this is the public client id so you don't need to put this in the you know dot env file let's add some other properties so script type is the javascript so script dot type is text plus javascript nice we want to load the script asynchronously so script dot async is true that's it now just append the script to the body so document dot body dot append child just append this script oh not child <laughs> script and now we want to execute this function when the component is mount so for that we are going to use use effect pretty simple react so use effect should be auto imported come on yeah auto imported i can see that cause there is no error from typescript okay just pass the empty dependency array so that it only executes when the component is mount and now here just call this add paper script great let's check this out it should work just go to a donate screen make sure you go to a donate screen okay and then just go to console we have some error and that is not related to the script just clear this and check if the window.paper is there yeah window.paper is not undefined it means our script is injected you can also double check this just go to elements just go to head now we have injected this in the body right so mm -hmm, yeah look at this script source www.paypal.com slash sdk slash js client id blah 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 so our script is successfully injected it means now we can create the paypal button but before that we can still optimize this so the idea is inside this function i'll check if the script is already injected or not and how by using this window.paypal so let's do that so if window.paypal is true it means the paypal script is already injected and to keep track of that i'll be creating a state variable so use state is a shortcut let's name the state variable script loaded script loaded and the setter is set script loaded Oops. and the initial value is false 
if the window.paper is there i'll set the script loaded to true and then return so that we don't need to go through the whole process again and also when the script is loaded on load so script on load so on load just trigger an arrow function and this is set script loaded true beautiful and now let's add the paypal button for that there is a nice package which is called react paypal button version 2 so search for react paypal button version 2 just go to npm site just install this using npm i react paypal button version 2 just go to your terminal and look at this i've already installed that cause in my machine it takes a little bit more time so i've just installed that so you just install that and meanwhile let's see the package okay so here this is a simple wrapper just look at the user's example look at the prerequisites to use paper smart payment button in production you must have a paper business account and you have a paper business account mm -hmm. you can just input the paper button from this react paper button version 2 just copy this and then inside this paper button you can just pass some properties which is amount and look at the amount we already have the amount in our state variable this is amount set amount we did that in the last part and then you can pass another property which is on success and this is what you want so inside this on success inside this function it will pass the details and the data and inside these details you have all the details about the pair and the transaction and then inside this function if the payment is successful you can just save the data in your database or do whatever you want it also has a property which is on error so if anything goes wrong in the process it will execute that function okay enough talk let's execute this okay just go to a top and put it here simple paper button from react paper button version 2 nice just remove this paper button we don't need that i mean the dummy paper button we don't need that just put a curly brace and here just check if the script is already loaded or not if it is loaded it means we can safely import the paper button a lot of paper button okay great and if the script is not loaded just put a span and so loading not loading loading dot 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 great inside this paper button just pass some properties so first one is obviously the amount and this is a state variable which is amount and then the on success function i mean on success property here you can pass a function and that will get the details and the second thing is data we don't need the data we need the details so just create an arrow function and just log out the details great let's see go to donate refresh the page you have this paypal button just select five dollar click on paypal it will launch a pop-up and here you just need to put your sandbox credential mm, for that let me just copy the sandbox credential mm, just go to accounts and then select an account let's say this one mm, Sergio Ramos copy the email id just go to our donate page click on continue just put it here and the password the password just copy this and put it here click on login so it has redirected me to the checkout button look at this the amount is five dollar this is high sergio this is ship to cause this is a checkout button just scroll down and click on pay now successful just check out the logs go to console and just click on this object and look at this we got all the details we got the pair inside this pair i have the email address the name the given name the surname and here inside this purchase unit look at the first element of the array you can see the amount and the value is five dollar the currency is usd the details about the pay and all this stuff okay so we just need to grab some of this stuff and then put it in our database and we are going to do that in the next part so that's it for this video so see you in the next part till then happy debugging so in the last part we have done the paypal setup and in this video we are going to do all the steps related to our database
we are also going to create a cedar file that will seed our database so let's go to mongodb atlas website just search for mongodb atlas or mongo atlas and here it is just click the first link mongodb atlas database just sign up if you don't have an account i have an account so let me log in mm -hmm. mine is code.sumas at gmail.com next password autofill click on login and by the way guys this atlas website is made using react if you don't know ah uh, come on yep okay so first of all you need to create a new project so just click on this drop down and select new project nice just give this project a name so this is save walter yt for youtube next and then this is project owner which is your account so just leave this as default and click on create project so let me just toggle the dark mode this is not the official dark mode of mongodb so just let me toggle this yeah okay cool so let's create a cluster click on this build a cluster we'll be going for the free option so just select this share cluster free click on this create a cluster just leave this as AWS just choose your region I'll be going for Mumbai and then this is default values then click on create cluster okay cool it will take a little bit more time to create the cluster meanwhile let's set up the database so just select this database access click on this and then just click on this add new database user here just put your name Sumit okay enter a password I'll be going for the auto generated secure password so just click on this that is cool mm -hmm -hmm. just copy the password and put it somewhere else I mean just save this cause it will be needed later okay put it here nice and then click on add user that's it okay so that's all for this database access just select the network access just click on this add IP address and for now just select this allow access from anywhere so 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 that's it click on confirm and that's it the status is pending now it will be active soon okay so let's see the cluster yeah, it is created nice just click on this connect and just grab the connection url mm -hmm. just select this connect your application yeah got it so just copy this url and now just go to your project just go to the sidebar and you should see a file which is called connectdb inside the libraries folder so inside this libs folder you should see a file which is connectdb it is in our boilerplate code so you should see the file cool now here you can see that inside this function i'm connecting this using mongoose.connect and make sure guys this mongoose package is installed Okay, so inside this mongoose.connect, I am getting this URL using this process.env.mongodb URI. So it means that I need to put this URL in the .env file. So just go to this .env.example. Oh, I have this .env.local. You might have this .env.example, so just change this to .env.local. And then just put the mongodb URI as mongodb URI. That's it. Okay, you just need to change something. So a password could be your password the password you have just copied okay and the second thing is you can change the database name so here is the database name which is my first database just change this to what save walter database okay cool now it's time to check the database connection so just save this and now inside this connect db i'm getting this mongo uri that is fine i pass some options that is i mean recommended from the mongodb documentation and then do something just go here and comment out all these stuffs okay so the first one is if the mongoose.connection or ready state is greater than one then just return it means it is already connected and then this is mongoose.connection.on so it will listen to this connected event if the database is connected it will log this out so connected to mongodb database and then the third one is mongoose.connection.on it will listen to the error event and if anything goes wrong it will just log out the error so let me just log out the error.message okay cool now i need to call this somewhere where to call 
uh, there is a lot of options you can actually call this inside the index.tsx in the server side but let's go for the api approach so let's go to sidebar inside this pages folder you should see this api folder inside this api folder you have this hello.ts this is a separate endpoint so again let me show you let's go to the browser go to localhost 3001 and just go to localhost 3001 slash api slash hello fd file located inside the api folder is a separate endpoint we are going to go in detail about the api but for now just you need to know this okay so i got the name john do fine so let me just call this db connect function inside this api so just put a try catch call this the asynchronous function inside the try just call db connect should be auto imported yes from library slash connect db call this and it's an asynchronous function so just use await beautiful inside the error uh, oh yeah just put async cool inside the error you can catch this or you know what just do something put this register status here if anything goes wrong just put 500 and pass something like message connection failed and if everything is fine oops, just duplicate this and put it here this is 200 connection established means db connection established okay so yeah let's check this and guys if you have changed the .env local file you need to restart your server so just restart your server npm run dev again <laughs> okay it is restarted now just go to api slash hello and press enter let's see ah connection established great so our database connection is ready and now let's create the models just go to a models folder model means mongoose models so you need to create two models one is quote and the second one is donation right so let's create the quote first quote means this one so we already have the data by the way just let me go to the home screen let's go to the family okay so this one these are the quotes so this data should be coming from the mongodb database so let me create the model first since this model let's get the file quote q u o oh q u o oh 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 dot t s cool close the sidebar first of all import the mongoose from mongoose mongoose cool let's get the schema const let's say quote schema this will be very simple schema so new mongoose dot schema here let's define the schema so it should have a name which is a string so the type string and it is required so required is true uh, we got something wrong and that is because this is not string this is capital string okay so this is our name which has a type string and this is required let me just copy this couple of times and then the second one is the text this is also a string and it is required and then the third one is picture url this is also a string and this is also required so let's save this and just export this out so export default mongoose.models.code if it is already created so mongoose.model.code and if not then create the model so mongoose.model the name of the model is code and the schema this is a code schema oh this is a code schema not code scheme code schema cool so we got our model right and now let's add some typescript so for that let's import the interface you have created for the code so i'm talking about this interface inside this libraries folder inside this types as this interface which is i code so let me just import this because we are going to inherit this this interface oh, our auto input will take care of that okay so let me just create a separate type so type this one is the part of typescript let's say code document code document so we are going to create a type that will basically inherit all the types of mongoose document so for that just use document and it should be coming from the mongoose document so let me just import this from mongoose so document 
cool and it has also a type of our i code the interface so and i code yeah that's it that's our model type is ready so just grab this code document and put it inside this generic so just put an angle bracket inside the schema and pass this code document that's it and then at last just export this as code document not directly code document but mongoose.model and just pass the code document here inside this generic oops cool and then here after this mongoose.model you can pass a generic and put this code document that's it I uh, got something wrong this is not models this is model with a capital M yeah got it so that's it that's our model is ready and now let's create the second model so again just go to its models folder let's create another file which is donation donation.ts donation.ts let me just copy this model and put it inside this donation.ts we need to change some data of course so first of all this is not code actually just select all the code so select the code and press ctrl and a in vs code and replace this with the donation replace all that's it okay so i don't have this i donation we need to create that type we are going to create that and then we are importing the mongoose and the document from mongoose that is fine we are creating a donation document that is inheriting all the types of document and the i donation okay that is cool and then this donation schema inside this donation schema i'm creating a schema using mongoose.schema passing the donation document as the generic and then this is name which is type string and required is true and then i don't need this text instead this is amount so amount which is a type number so number and this is required and then this picture url we don't need that fine and just export this out so mongoose.models.donation as mongoose.model just pass the donation document and if the model is not already created in that case just create the model and export this out so this is mongoose.model just passing the donation document as generic the name of the model is donation and this is getting the schema donation schema fine so the last part is we need to create this type which is i donation so just go to types just create the interface so export interface i donation okay this is name string so it should have a name string and then the second one is amount which is a number great so i have my i code i have the i donation and anything is wrong here the error should be resolved yeah great fine and now i'm going to create a cedar what is a cedar by the way so if you don't know about database seeding, let me tell you about this. This is nothing but populating the database with some dummy data. For example, let's say you are making a social media website. In that case, you should have some dummy data about the post or the users, right? So that you can test your API and check all the other functionalities. That's it. This is called database seeding. In short, just populate your database with some dummy data. So for that, let me just create a file. Just close this, close this. Just go to your root folder and let's create cedar.ts not rs so cedar.ts cool first of all close all the other files and open cedar.ts okay so here first of all we need to make the database connection so let me just comment that out because we need to create a separate file for separate function for that because we don't want to mess up with the connect db function and there's a reason behind that i'll tell you that okay so this is the first one we're going to create that function later second one is import data so import data import data means basically the seeding data so let me create a function which is import data it's an arrow function which is asynchronous it has to be asynchronous okay so inside a try catch block let's perform some asynchronous stuff so first of all remember we have created a data file inside this data.ts just go to libs inside this data.ts we have some data i mean the array of objects right so we are going to populate our database with this data so for that we need to import this data and our auto import will do that so let's grab the code this is the model we have just created so yeah this is imported just put it at the top cool so code dot insert many here just put the data and the data should be auto imported from libs source data and not data 
this is quotes quotes should be auto imported it is auto imported from lib plus data so this will be inserted in the quote model and that will create a collection which is called quotes okay so yeah we are going good it's an asynchronous function so just use await fine now one important part of seeding is before inserting any data just delete all the data which is already there in the database so just use await again and just use quote dot delete many that's it this will delete all the data inside the quote model i mean inside the quotes collection hmm all good so if this is performed well just log out data is imported data imported then just exit the process so process dot exit with a status code zero it means all good and if anything goes wrong just copy this and just log out data dash i mean not imported not imported and the exit status is one so something went wrong so yeah that's our import data function and let's get another function which is destroy data so this function will be responsible to destroy the data so destroy data okay inside this i have this code which is await code dot delete many and that is all for this function i don't need the second one mm -hmm. this is data destroyed and then if anything goes wrong this is data not destroyed fine okay now i need to call this function so we are going to call this function based on a command line argument so for that let's use the process dot argv so if process dot argv using this i can get all the arguments of the common line so if the third argument of the common line is dash d in that case i'll call destroy data and if it seems confusing don't worry it will be crystal clear in a minute i promise if this is dash d i'll be calling dash d means destroy so destroy data else i'll call what import data import data save this great and now let's establish the database connection okay so as a database connection we can just call this connect db right but we have some problem i mean not a problem but that this is not the best practice why because inside this connect db function look at this this is accessing a environment variable this one this process dot env dot mongo db uri so if you call this connect db function from the cdat dot ts as this cdat.ts is inside the node environment you need to set up a separate dot env package inside this connect db function but we don't want to mess up with this connect db function i mean we can just install something like dot env and then just call dot env dot env dot configure and it will work but we don't want to mess up with the file again so yeah we are going to create this dot env dot configure in the cdat.ts but not in the connect connect db.ts okay so this is a base practice that's it since i just hit dot ts as you know this connect db and create the function again so just copy this mongoose dot connect from here copy this go to cdat dot ts put it here import the mongoose uh auto imported it's not auto import is wrong bro mongoose from mongoose that's it and this will return me a promise so just use dot then if everything is fine just log out log out something like database is connected db connected and if anything goes wrong just catch the error just log out the error dot message that's it remove the semicolon fine and now i need to grab this environment variable which is mongodb uri and to get the environment variable from a node js process you need to install a package which is dot env so just go to your terminal and type npm i dot env cool okay just remove this connect db we don't need that mm -hmm. installed cool so as import the package import dot env from dot env dot env cool and just set up this so dot env dot configure why my vs code is slow so dot env dot config and just set up the path 
so path so this is located inside our root folder right so dot env dot local inside our root folder yes so so grab that current directory which is directory name underscore underscore plus up plus slash dot env dot local cool and now we need to execute this script for that just go to package.json and let's create a script so inside the script let's put a comma let's create another one which is let's say data dot import or data colon import okay cool so execute this using ts node and make sure guys your ts node is installed i have installed this globally so make sure it is installed so ts node the script is cdat dot ts that's it just copy this the second one is data colon destroy and this is ts node cdat.ts again but with a d flag let's remove the comma and look at this d flag this is used inside our if condition so inside the cdat.ts I'm talking about this d flag so if the third argument of the command line is d in that case that's called destroy data and the third argument is dash d here so this one is the first argument this ts node this one is the second argument which is cdat.ts and this is the third dash d cool and now let's execute this we are going to face an error let's see so in the second terminal just run npm run data.import enter and the error he is here cool oh data.import is not here which is now oh just save this and now let's run this mm -hmm. yeah got it so the problem is cannot use import statement outside a module so the problem comes from the tsconfig.json so inside this tsconfig.json look at this it has a module which is esnext the module is set as esnext look at this so basically typescript compiles the file with the esnext pattern but node.js was built on common.js pattern so that's why this is a conflict to solve this issue let's create another config file so inside this root let's create another file which is tsconfig dot cedar dot json okay so this file will be responsible to run this script okay so here let's put a curly brace first of all extend everything from the tsconfig.json so extends ups not excludes extends extends from txconfig.json cool and then just set the compiler option so compiler options here just set the module so module this is common js that's it save this and now just go to package.json again and modify the script so basically we need to tell the script that don't use the tsconfig.json file instead just use the tsconfig.cdat.json file so for that you need to put the location which is done using the project flag and then pass the file name which is tsconfig dot cedar i can't type with the one hand okay the second one is again just put it here nine just save this and now it should work let's see let's clear the console run this npm run data import oh we still have some error which is cannot file at that library slash data and that is fair yeah i know that is fair and that is because we need to remove this at the rate cause cause this is inside the ts node and it can't use the path alias so just go to cdat.ts let's go to top first of all it is not at that libraries it is dot slash libraries and then the second one is dot slash model let's see run this again clear the console npm run data import Oh, look at this database connected and data is imported and now just go to mongoose database this cluster close this click on this collection and look at this I have my data so cedar file is working fine this heating is a very important part of development so I did not want to skip that okay so our cedar is working fine we have our models ready in the next part we are going to create our api 
and then we are gonna play with the API so that's it guys that's it for this video so in the last part of this next day series we have created the MongoDB models and the seeder and in this video we are gonna see an important feature of Next.js which is the serverless API functions remember I told you that we can create API endpoints right inside the Next.js app yes this video is all about that well first I'll create the API endpoints with the typical Next.js pattern and then I'll use the Next.connect package which provides much more features for creating Next.js API okay enough talk let's write some bugs so just go to your code editor in the last video I have created this hello.ts endpoints right to test our database connection okay so we are gonna rename this to donation.ts cause we are gonna create the donation api first donation okay so i'll make two methods here one is get and one is post the get method will get the top five donations and the post method is to create a donation okay so <laughs> cool let's remove this try catch block for now cool and by the way guys this donation.ts is a separate endpoint that means this localhost 3000 slash api slash donation is an endpoint so first add the type script mm -hmm, this request has a type of next api request next api request yep should be auto imported no oh yeah auto imported from next package and the response is next api response okay cool so the typical approach to create an api endpoint inside the next js is to get the method from this request and then just use a switch case inside the switch case just match the get method post method and all okay so let me show you just get the request method first so const destructure this from the request just give the method method and now i'll check the method inside the switch case so switch case should have a code snippet yep cool so the key is the method of course and then the value is instead of string just pass gate I'll put all the logic of gate here and then just use another case for the post this is very old fashioned but yeah that's how next.js API works okay so for the gate method I should get the top 5 donations when sorted by the date right so for that we can use the donation model remember we have also created this donation model in the last part we are going to use this model oh by the way guys I need to edit this model so the idea is we need to add another field which is created at right I mean when the donation is created so for that just pass another object inside this you know, mongoose.schema which is timestamp come on yeah timestamp true so this will create two additional field inside this collection which is created at and the updated at okay so inside this gauge method we are going to use a donation model should be auto imported yep auto imported no nope, not auto imported yep auto imported <laughs> so donation dot find so get all the donations and then dot sort we can change the sort method sort by created at so in descending order so that's why we use the negative sign created at and we need to get only the top five donations so for that I can limit it to top five okay so this will give me the donations uh, we need to use that await because this is an asynchronous call and just grab this in donations cool let's also use the try catch block to handle the error inside this asynchronous function put it inside the try cool so if everything is fine I'll response this with a status code 200 so this dot status with 200 and inside a json object just pass the donation cool yeah really cool and if anything goes wrong i just grab the error just log out the error uh -huh. error dot message cool and i respond this with a status code 500 which is server is broken just pass message server broken cool increase the font size mm, better cool so that's all the logic for the gate and now let's put the logic for the post my voice is not clear because i'm having some you know, serious health problem anyway so just remove this block of code cool 
So const just get this inside this donation. Just use the donation constructor. So donation. And now I just need to pass the data. So I can get the data using request.body. So just get the request.body and put it inside this constructor. That's it. It will give me the object. And now I'll save this. But before that, I need to correct the spelling. Okay, this is donation dot save and this is also an asynchronous call so just use await up await okay so if everything is fine i'll return this with a status code 201 and the json is only a donation cool and if anything goes wrong just put a status code 500 and pass the message server is broken cool save this nice mm -hmm. And now we need to call this DB Connect. Remember, we need to add the database connection. So for that, just before this switch, just use await and then DB Connect, just call this. That's it. Okay, so now let's test this endpoint. So just go to Postman. I mean, you don't need to go to Postman. Okay, look at this. We have already created the endpoint, which is localhost 3000 slash API slash donation. I don't know how to increase the font in Postman. Anyway, look at this. This is a get method and now if I just click on this send, I should not get any data because we don't have any donation object in our database. And now let's create a donation. So this is the same endpoint. So just copy this. Let's create another one. <laughs> just put it here. Just make this a post request. Okay. Just go to its body. Click on this body. Select the raw. Inside this raw, inside this drop down, just select this JSON. Cool. Let's add the data. I mean, just put the data. What we want? We need to send the amount, which is let's say 10 rupees, and the name. Uh, wow. Name is Sumit. Enter. And look at this. We got the data. With that, we also got two additional fields, which is created at and updated at. Right. Nice. So let's get another donation. Mm -hmm. It's a one dollar, and the name is Lucas. Lucas Vasquez Hala Madrid. <laughs> Control and enter, and this will fire another request. So look at this. I got another data, which is amount one. Name is Lucas, and the created and the updated at. And now, if I just make a get request on this endpoint, I should get the data. Look at this. Click on send. Nice. And also notice that I got the Lucas first cause it is sorted in descending order by the date nice okay my endpoint is working fine and now let's go for the better approach which is the next connect package <laughs> just search for next connect this is specially made for next.js api endpoints okay just select the first one this next connect npm okay look at this we have all the features here listed it is TypeScript supported. This is compatible with the Ex ExpressJS in middleware, which is much much needed in our app. Okay, it is lightweight. This is 5x faster. And look at the code style here. Just input this next connect and just use the next connect dot get, next connect dot post dot put dot patch and all. You can also use the middleware using this dot use. So if you are coming from an ExpressJS background, it will be much much familiar for you. So let's discuss the problem with the typical approach of Next.js. Look at this. This is very unreadable code. Especially if you are coming from an ExpressJS background, you will find this approach very old fashioned. It's very tough to add middlewares and chain middlewares. And then you can't use the Express package as middlewares. And then there are problems in error handling. And there are a lot of problems in this approach. So let's use the next connect. This is really cool. So just install that. Go to your terminal. Terminal. Uh, let's create another one and just copy the installation code which is npm i next connect copy this put it here so next connect package solves pretty much all the problems cool this is installed nice and now i'll comment out this whole code block okay this whole function for the reference i don't need that for you and by the way guys, I'll put all the code in the description box. If anything goes wrong in your code, you can just check that out. Okay. So, yep. So let's input the next connect. 
and my auto input will do that okay so first of all let's create a handler so const handler next connect should be auto imported let's see oh auto imported cool and now we can just use the next connect dot get so we can just use handler dot get and this is a higher order function that will get the request response and the next handler okay so just get the request response and the next let's make an arrow function that's it i can put all the logic inside this function inside this callback function okay so this will be an asynchronous function so just use async it's also at the types here so request is again next api request we have already imported that so next api request the response is next api response and this next would be coming from the next connect handler which is next handler should be auto imported yeah auto imported cool and now just add the logic here we already have the logic so just grab this try catch block copy this and put it here just comment this out nice that's it we don't need any switch case and all okay and then just use the post method so dot post again it will get the request response and the next handler so just grab this line put it inside this callback function cool my dog is barking which is a common thing just grab the logic from here just get the try catch block copy this put it here and then just comment this out nice that's it and now what about the database connection look at this we are calling this db connect here but how can we call this db connect inside this next connect package the answer is very simple we can use this as a middleware so for that let's create a middleware and then we are going to use this using handler.use okay pretty simple so let's create a middleware so let's name this const up what happened oh i mean this code block is yeah anyway so const let's say database the name of the middleware okay so it will get the request response and the next right so let's create a function an asynchronous function which will get the request response and the next request response and next i'll add the type later let's add the types now so request response and the next let's copy this put it here nice okay cool so here let's use the try catch block and just call this db connect inside this try use await for the asynchronous call if anything goes wrong just log out the error and the database connection error error dot message okay cool and then after that just remember to call this next so that it goes to the next middleware that's it my middleware is ready and now i can call this database using handler dot use so handler dot use just pass this database middleware that's it that's how simple this is okay and the last thing is we need to export this handler so just use export default handler oops not handler handler that's it let's see if it's working fine or not let's go to postman again just make a get request click send and yeah fine let's create a post request this is $1 to $5 let's make this $5 and the name is ramos send request and nice it's working fine and now next connect comes with much more features for example it automatically handles the error so it handles the 404 error and the 500 error so let's see the 404 error so let's say if you are making a put request which does not exist it will automatically send you a not found not found error or something like that yeah look at this this is not found 
so the api is not broken this is still working but this is not found okay so like this it also handles the 500 by default you can always override that i recommend you to go through this package look at this documentation this is really beautifully documented so just you know read about this look at this this option that no match you can override that this one I'm talking about this just let me know if you want me to make a in-depth tutorial on this next planet because I really enjoy this package okay cool and now remember we have also created this folder which is uh, middlewares so I'm gonna put this database middleware inside this middlewares folder okay so just grab this so just grab this and code with most talks like this grab this okay so inside this middleware let's create another file which is database dot ts put it here just export this out export default database save this we just need to import this next api request or import the next api response and the next handler cool import the db connect next handler is not imported why not imported cool so let's go to donation.ts and here just import this database put dot imported beautiful and now let's get another endpoint which is the quotes it will get all the quotes remember we have also created a model which is quotes so code dot course dot ts cool so I'll just copy paste this because this is really simple so first of all I'll get all this package just go to this code put it here uh, I don't need this donation instead I need the code so slash code code and just grab the module code 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 and then just copy this get method because we don't have this post method here so inside this code put it here code export this out so export default handler nice so the logic is <laughs> just remove this mongodb code and now this is const quotes shall get all the quotes right so quotes not quotes, quote that find get everything so just put an empty object this is an asynchronous call just so just use avid that's it so if everything is fine just pass the quotes inside this json yeah that's it let's check this out so let's save this let's go to postman again let's copy the url put it here so the endpoint is localhost 3000 slash api slash quotes q u o t e s quotes control and enter and look at this we got the data so the first one is walter jr my dad is amazing it's funny but i did not know that until i found out he was going to die and then this is skylar white and the jesse ping man nice so our endpoint is working fine okay and now we can further improve this so what i mean by that is look at this request this is not used so just use an underscore and that will remove the warning and then look at this next we are also not using this so just use an underscore a again but that will give you an error because under because you have used the underscore twice so for that the better approach is just use underscore two or underscore three sorry because this is the third parameter and the first one is underscore one that's it so like this you can just you know, substitute all the unused variables inside this parameter so let's save this yeah and that's it for this video so in the next video we are going to see all the data fetching approach of next.js which is much much important feature of next.js and i'm really excited to teach about that okay so see you in the next video so in the last part we have created the apis so this apis this donation.ts this is the endpoint and then this quotes.ts oh not inside this model this quotes.ts inside the api so in this part we are going to use this api to get the data
So let's first see the documentation of this Next.js data fetching technique. I'll put the link of this documentation in the description box. Please check that out. Please, please, please check, the, check out the documentation. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so Next.js has three unique functions to fetch data for pre-rendering. First one is get static props, which is used for static site generation. This function only runs on build time. And then the second one is get static path. This is also used for static site generation, but for dynamic routes. We are not going to see this function as we don't have any dynamic route. And then we have this get server side props. This is used for server side rendering, which runs on every request. We are going to see that. Okay. And then there is a technique to update the static pages called incremental static site generation or incremental static regeneration in short ISR. We are going to see that in action. Okay. So that's a little overview about this technique. Just please check out the documentation. There are a lot of options you can play with. <laughs> we are going to implement this family page first. So we are going to convert this page as static page. Okay. So for that, just go to people page, sorry, family.psx, not people. Just close the sidebar. Cool. At the bottom, you need to create a function which is called get static props. And you need to export this cause. It is going to use in a build time. So export cont a get static props. Cool. And this will get a context which we don't really need. So context, you can also set the type which is get static props context. Yep. It has a lot of things. So context dot, you can use the params. This is really important, but we don't need that. Anyway, so what we are going to do, we are going to make an API request. So just use a try catch cause it's going to be an asynchronous call. And then just use fetch to make the request. You can use Axios, but I'll be going for the fetch. So this is inbuilt and now just let me grab the api the api endpoint i should say this is api slash course right if i am not wrong yes api slash course this will give me the data so just copy this url and just put it inside this page remember inside this server side functions i mean this get static props or get server side props and all this stuff you need to put the absolute url okay there's no option you need to put the absolute URL. Fine. So I'll be going for the async await. So just use async and just use await here. Just get the response. So const response. Cool. And then I need to get the data using res.json. But the data I'll not create this data as const because I'm also going to return this data. So just use let at the top. Let data just remove this const from here. Cool. So this is again await res.json. Fine, pretty simple. And if anything goes wrong, just log out the error. Cool. And now the important part is from this function, you need to return the data inside a specific shape. And the shape is let's say return. Inside this object, you need to create another object which is prop as the key. Inside this props object, you need to pass all the data. So let's say I want to pass the quotes. So the quotes is data. Cool. That's it. And now this quotes will be available as the property inside this family component or family page component, I should say. So just use TypeScript here. The family is a type of next page. Uh -huh -huh. Next page inside this generic, just use the type so quotes as a type of I quote. So do auto import it, I quote array auto import it from library slash types. Cool, just destructure this so quotes. Cool, and now I don't need this library slash data, just comment this out. Nice, so this quotes I'll be mapping over this and then render the code okay lot of codes so pretty simple i'm making a request inside this get static props to this particular url to this particular api endpoint and then i'm getting the data and just returning this data inside this props as codes i'm getting this codes i'm getting this codes inside this props again just restructuring this and render over this pretty simple so just run this let's see i should not say any change 
I should be seeing the same data. Let's see. Refresh uh, my next image. Cool. Let's go to family. And yeah, I have the data. But now I want to log out something like just to show that this function is getting executed. <laughs> yeah, just log out something. I am called. I am called. Cool. Save this. And now refresh the page. Refresh. Let's go back to this console and look at this. I am called. But hey, here's the problem. I have told you that this function is only called in a build time. But this is called every time the page is refreshed. What's the problem? Look at this. The page is refreshed. And this is still called. Like I am called. What's going on? Well, this is because in development mode, this get static props is getting executed every time the page is refreshed. This is just to ease your development process, nothing else. So let me just quickly build this project. So npm run build. But, 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 if you are building this project with me, make sure that your development server is running. And another thing is, just go inside this middleware folder or inside this models folder. Just go inside this middleware folder first. Just go to index.ts and make sure you are returning something from this module because I am using ES6 modules right and you need to either import or export something so just export dummy object that's it save this just go inside this index.ts inside the modules folder and make sure you have exported something like export a dummy object okay so just run npm run build and guys make sure your development server is running because it is going to make a request to its local of 3000 Slash API slash codes, and you can also see that just notice this development server, it should get a request. Look at this, it got the request inside the serverless function slash API slash codes. And if you just go to a production server, just go inside this production server terminal, you should see this I am called. <laughs> Look at this, I am called. It means this function is called in the build time. Right, so let me just quickly run the production server. So npm run start. This should be running on localhost 3000, I guess. Yep, look at this, how fast this is. So localhost 3000, just go to your browser and go inside this localhost 3000. Fine, just go to family. Look at this, how fast this is. Right, just go to donate, just go to family. This is super fast and that's the beauty of Next.js. You can use separate architecture in separate page. Like for example, you can use get server side props function inside a page and then in another page you can use get static props. Anyway, so what I want to show you that if I just refresh this page, this is super fast. Okay. And then just go to this terminal and look at this. There is no console log like I am called or something like that. So it means that this function is not called. Right. But what if you need to change some data? Let's say you want to change the name of this Walter Jr. Or you want to add some more data. In that case, you need to rebuild the whole project. And in a giant project, there are like 40 or 50 pages. In that case, it will take around two or three hours to build a project. And that is a problem. So basically this page is a static page. And now if I change some data, so just go to Mongo cluster and then change some data inside this course collection let's say this walter jr i'm going to change the name so from walter jr to breakfast <laughs> like he loves breakfast okay update and i have modified the data right so now if i refresh the local of 3000 slash family i should not see the new data because this page is static look at this walter jr so if i want to render the new data i need to rebuild the whole project so that's where comes the incremental static generation. So let me show you how it works. So basically, if you need to rebuild a static page after some interval, you can use this incremental static generation or incremental static regeneration. Both are same. And how can you use that? Really simple. So inside this get static props, when you are returning this object, you need to put another key value, which is revalidate. And then the value is the number of seconds. So let's say I want to rebuild this particular page after 10 seconds. Now here's the point you need to remember. 
this page will be rebuilt after 10 seconds but 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 if it does not get any request after 10 seconds the page will not be rebuilt so for example let's say nobody is visiting this page after 20 seconds this page has still no visitor after 30 seconds still this page has no visitor but after 31 seconds someone visit this page so after 31 seconds when the page got the first request next day will start rebuilding this particular page so it means that the first user after this 10 second interval will still see the old page and meanwhile next day will start rebuilding the page if it seems confusing don't worry i'm gonna show you this in practical okay so basically rebuild it 10 seconds save this and now just let me rebuild this project again but this time i want to do something else i want to close the development server too so it means that it can't make a request to this localhost 3001 in that case it will get an error so the data will be null if the data is null i should pass an empty array so just use a nullis character or nullis operator i should say this empty array if you are not familiar with this operator it is nullis operator it means that if the first value is null it will execute the second value and if the first value is not null it will not reach to the second value pretty simple okay so just save this and now just run npm run dev oh not run dev run build look at this it will get an error i mean an error inside this function uh -huh -huh. yeah look at this while building this project it got an error like this connection refused yeah and i am called as this function is called but the project is successfully built so just run npm run start to run the production server cool and now let's go to localhost 3000 slash family just refresh the page and you should not see any data refresh this look at this we don't have any data because it got an empty array just let me make this side by side side by side cool uh -huh. is it cool not cool i want you to focus on this terminal okay okay so just refresh this page and look at this it got a request and that is because the 10 second is passed okay just quickly refresh this and look at this i am called and now just quickly refresh this again refresh and it has not got any request refresh refresh so if you see any logs here it means that the 10 seconds has passed so just quickly refresh this uh, just give me a second just let me make this 15 seconds cause my server is slow so refill it not 15 let's say 20 seconds okay so just save this and quickly rebuild this project npm run build find the project is built just let me run that uh, production server so npm run start cool just expand the terminal and now the revival date is 20 seconds cool just refresh the page fine look at this it has refreshed and it has not got any request refresh again refresh it hasn't got any request refresh it means that the 20 second is not passed so inside the 20 second or inside every 20 second when the page is rebuilt all the users will see the same page the page which is already built so refresh look at this after 20 seconds it's got a request to refresh this again so it means that if i now just run this development server using npm run dev it should make a request after 20 seconds right and in that case it should get the data so let me just run this development server npm run dev fine okay now look at this i guess 20 seconds is passed refresh this page look at this it makes a request to this api slash code and you can see the log i am called so it means now if i just refresh the page i should see the data because the page is built refresh the page and 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 here it is my data look at this show you the terminal yep look at this i have the data okay and now if i just change something manually again let's say this breakfast to walter jr back to walter jr just save this or update and now if i just go to localhost 3000 
and refresh the page you should not see the data you should not see the updated data and that is because and that is because this is the first request but meanwhile next day started building the page and now i hope the page is built just refresh the page and look at this we have this walter junior so what does it mean it means that we don't need to rebuild the whole project let me show you again so just refresh this okay 20 seconds counter has started just go to the you know database and change something like jcp to just remove the jc and let's make this kalin oh, i don't know whoever it is kalin bhai or whoever so update and now if you just go to local citizen slash family just refresh the page you should not see the updated data but i hope 20 seconds is passed let's see refresh the page uh -huh, look at this kalin so that's how incremental static generation works okay you can make this page as static or you can make this page as incremental static generation whatever you want okay i'll leave this as incremental static generation cool just let me kill this develop uh, sorry production server and now let's implement the statistics i'm talking about the statistics the stats how should i implement this page static page nope no way this page is not going to be static because the data is going to be changed after every request after every donation i should see the last five donators so i can't make this a static page then the second option is dynamic static page nope this page is not dynamic the url is not dynamic then the third is server side rendering which is going to be executed on every request so let's use that so let's go to the documentation and just search for get server side props here it is so look at the description if you export an async function called get server side props from a page xjs will pre-render this page on each request using this data written by this get server side props so let me just quickly copy this function this is again the same thing okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. just close this terminal the second terminal just go to stats okay here just after this page just implement this get server set props context you can set the type which we again don't really need so get uh -huh -huh, server side props context mm -hmm. here it is okay so again just make a request can I just copy this from this family? The fetch thing. Just try catch. Just copy all of this. Just go to stats. Put it here. Fine. So I have this data. The URL is slash API slash uh, donation, I guess. Yep, donation. So it will give me the last five donation, right? Fine. And now I'll just send the data as donation. And pass the data cool save this and now I can just grab this as props so again just use the TypeScript next page let me just increase the font size Increase the terminal expand editor there are a lot of stuff so next page inside this generic just use donation or donation should be donation from it and it has a type i donation right no not i donation what are you talking about let's go to libraries i guess i have made a type yep i donation then why it is not showing in my intelligence i donation should be auto imported fine imported it's an array and here just make this donation cool so now i can just map over this donation and render the data let's remove this array 5 the dummy array is donation something went wrong can't find the name donations what are you talking oh i have not distracted that cool donations fine so again pretty simple stuff i have created a function which is called get server set prop because i want this page to be rebuilt on every request again i am making a request to this localhost 3000 slash api slash donation and by the way guys this localhost 3000 should be coming from an environment variable and i'll make this in the deployment part don't worry and then i'm getting this data i'm logging out if anything goes wrong also log out something like server side function called 
props function called okay and then return an object inside this object just use props and just pass the props then you can destructure this just get the donation and map over this just change the data so this is donation dot name i guess i have this type then why it is not showing the intelligence oh donation dot name and the amount so donation dot amount just use a dollar fine save this let's see refresh the page this local of 3000 just go to donate sorry stats and look at this we got our donation we refresh the page fine just go to the console and you should see that this function is called the server side props called server side props called okay because i have refreshed the page three times fine so now let's implement this total donation and then we are going to implement this donate function like the post request okay so let's implement this oh what is going wrong here it's a bug it donate is in yellow and family is also in yellow i need to fix that okay so just go to stats just implement this total donation this is pretty simple i'm going to create a function and then i'm just going to call this function so let's create a function mm-hmm cool let's name this get total donation okay the spelling is wrong sumit donation oh d o n a t i o n o uh, this function has no argument but it will return a string so string cool okay so i'm going to use a reduce method of array so donations dot reduce since this callback function first argument is the accumulator and then the item which is let's say donation cool just use an arrow function and get the data so basically return accumulator plus donation donation dot amount cool and the accumulator starts with zero fine save this and anything is wrong here yep that is because i have not written in data and that's the beauty of typescript look at this so const let's say total amount fine just return this return total amount mm-hmm i can still make this shorter so i can just remove this return because it has only one statement inside this callback function inside this arrow function i should say and now just save this oh i need to pass a string so just use and there's a reason because i have used string just use a template string and then use dollar total amount and use a normal dollar i mean normal dollar sign and now it's a string that is perfectly fine my type script is happy just grab this get total donation and put it here inside a curly brace cause i'm going to execute some javascript just call this fine okay it should work and now just go to donate screen and let's implement this donate pretty simple so i'm going to create a function which is add donation in database and then i'll call this after this success after this on success okay so just create a function it's a const add donation again the spelling is wrong in db it should get the name name is string I'm also gonna make this an asynchronous function cause I'm going to make asynchronous call. Fine. So just use the try catch. Here, I'm going to use the fetch again. So fetch. I'm using fetch after around one year. Just grab the URL from the donation, no, from the stats. Yep. So just grab this URL. But this time I'm gonna make a post request. Okay, inside this config, oh, wow. Inside this config, just use method. This is post, and then the body. 
just pass an object here yeah, just pass the name and the amount i can get the name from the function argument and the amount i can get this from the state but something is wrong and that is because you need to pass this object as stringified so just use this under stringify and wrap this object cool save this fine so let's grab this data const response cool let's grab the data so const data as again await res.json fine and for now just log out the data cool save this and if anything goes wrong just log out the error fine so let's call this add donation in db after this on success just call this and just pass the name so details oh details if you remember from the last video details dot pair dot name dot given name yep cool but 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 we need to modify our api and that is because i am passing this as stringified value look at this a stringified value right so i need to parse that in my api so just go to <laughs> donation and here inside this post request just use json.parse and then pass the body and by the way guys if anything goes wrong in your code i'll put the github link in the description box so you can just check that out okay so just save this and now just go to donate again there is a bug i need to fix that so just go to donate cool i selected 10 dollar click on paypal i'm sure that i've forgotten the password uh, you are logging into an account of the seller for the purchase oh this is the same account i guess just grab an account let's say this one the second one let's copy the url the name is john doe let's go here click to continue replace this just copy the password copy this go to donate click to continue put the password here click on login and that is fine okay i've been successfully logged in click on pay now and i guess everything is fine just go to console yeah we have this object and this is a response from our database so it means that if i just go to statistics i should see the john doe at the top look at this john doe i mean the given name the first one and it has ten dollar let's make another one just go to donate and by the way guys just see the total donation this is 26 dollars so 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 5 plus 1 is 26 let's go to donate again let's make five dollar click on paypal just donate click on pay now uh-huh let's go to stats and yeah join at the top with five dollar so that's it for this video in the next part we are going to first refactor our project basically we need to fix this bug and then we need to fix the index.ts file and then we are going to deploy our project so that's it see you in the next video but before that please hit the like button please 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 cause it's 2 am around 2 am so please hit the like button see you in the next video bye hey guys welcome back to our project this is the last part of the series in this part we are going to deploy our project to virtual we are also going to refactor our project okay so let's prepare the code for the deployment just go to your code editor so basically you need to manage the environment variables so currently we are getting the url as this localhost 3000 look at this this localhost 3001 we need to replace this with the environment variables now in virtual you can use the virtual url as the base endpoint so let me just talk about this just go to a documentation okay i'll put the link of this documentation in the description box although i'm sure that you are not gonna check this anyway just look at the system environment variables here under this 
you can see this virtual environment virtual url and this virtual url just look at the description the url of the deployment so this is the base endpoint but the best thing about the system variable is this is automatically populated by virtual so you don't need to manage this externally but 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 we are not going to use that there are a couple of reasons behind this first one is if you use the virtual url as the base endpoint it will only work if you deploy the project in virtual so let's say some day you decided to deploy the project in some other platform in that case you need to reconfigure the project so we are going to avoid that and the second point is i personally faced some weird bugs with this virtual url there are also some github issues regarding the virtual url so just avoid that okay so just go back to your code editor we are going to use the layman way so just go to your env.local cool we are going to set up a base endpoint or i should say api base endpoint <laughs> so just create a variable api all in caps base endpoint cool so this is currently localhost 3001 right so just get that localhost 3001 go to your env.local and put this nice and then just replace this with this api base endpoint okay just use the template string so just go to all the url and replace this so using dollar and i can get the environment variables using process dot env dot this api base endpoint cool so just copy this and then anything else in this page nope just go to donate dot tsx okay here i have this in the client side in this client side but now here's the thing about this client side if you want to use this variable in the client side you need to use the next public as the prefix so what i mean by that is look at this this is add donation in db and this is used in the browser side right so if i just use this if i just use this as this as this process.env.api base endpoint this is not going to work we need to use next public as the prefix so for that again just go to .env.local and duplicate this but this time just use next public okay so basically we are creating total three environment variables one is this mongodb uri second is this api base endpoint and third one is this next public api base endpoint so just copy this just go to this donate.tsx and replace this cool okay fine anything else anywhere else uh -huh, just go to stats statistics where is the stats yeah here it is there is nothing in the client side but there is in the there is something in the server side yep this one so just replace this dollar process dot env dot not next public but only api base endpoint okay dollar and yeah fine cool save this and i think i have substituted all the localhost 3001 yeah cool so just save this save all the files and now just create a github repository and push this code to the main branch so let's do that close this nice i already have a github repository so just copy all these three codes let me just commit this like prepared for deployment just go to main git switch main yeah, let me just merge this test 2 and yep done okay done so now i can commit i don't need to use this commit but yeah that's okay prepare for deployment cool main branch is clean fine now let me just copy all these codes again and just run this so i'm pushing the code to the main branch and let it push Meanwhile, you just go to Virtual. So just go to Virtual.com and create an account. I already have an account, but remember to create an account with the GitHub because that's the best way to create an account for the coders. Okay, so mm -hmm. now after creating the account, you should have this dashboard. Just go to this new project and then from this Git repository, just choose your Git repository mine is this save walter ytube not ytube youtube buddy okay you can change the project name this is save walter that is fine 
and then this framework preset this is next stage that is fine root directory dot slash that is okay build and output settings you don't need to touch this i mean next build is the default and then this environment variables here you need to set up the environment variables okay so just grab this mongo uri and just go to env.local what is that here it is just copy this mongo uri the key just go to virtual and set this name and the value just copy this and put it here add nice and then i have this base endpoint look at this so just save this api base endpoint so just copy this api based endpoint let's put it here but what is the value you have not yet deployed the project so you don't have the value right so the best thing you can do is just leave this for now and then after deploy the project we are going to reconfigure this and redeploy the project okay so just for now just deploy yep look at this it is listening to the main branch so every time you push the code to the main branch it will redeploy the project and by the way guys make sure there is no typescript related error else it will fail the build just look at this it is building aha uh -huh, only absolute urls are supported look at this we have some error which is only absolute urls are supported we are going to fix that and this is deployed i guess great the project is deployed so click on visit and look at this let's go to stats you should not have the data in fact you should see an error yep and this is because we don't have the base endpoint set so let's set this let's go to home page let's copy this base url and now just again go to your virtual click on this open dashboard just go to settings okay just click on this environment variables from the sidebar and now let's set this so just put the value here the base endpoint and now just copy the environment variable key which is api base endpoint just go here put it as the name fine just add this nice and then the second one is this next public api base endpoint just copy this and then again set another variable the url is just you can copy this put the value here fine click on add and that's it and now we need to redeploy the project so let's go to deployment just click on this three dots and click on redeploy click on redeploy again that's it okay ready let's click on visit Oh, by the way, guys, look at this. This is a different URL, and that is because Virtual gives you multiple URL. So don't worry about this. Just go to stats, and look at this. We have our stats. Let's go to family, and here it is. Let's make a donation. So just go to donate. Click on PayPal. I don't know the PayPal password, so let me just get that. Copy the password. Go here. Put it here. Stay logged in. Click on login. So I should see ten dollar at the top. Mm -hmm. Click on pay now. Great. Just go to stats. Oh, something went wrong. What? Let's go to console. Ah, we have an error, and that is because the code says so. Look at this. This is defined here, right? So save Walter Virtual dot app slash Uh, slash API slash donation, but this is making a request to a different URL. So this is a code issue. So we need to fix that. Basically, we just need to go to the same URL, which is the save Walter dot Virtual dot app, because this is a global URL. Again, I told you that Virtual gives you multiple URL. So just go to this main URL, which is the save Walter dot Virtual dot app. Your project name dot Virtual dot app. So here, if you just make a donation, it will work. But there is another problem, which is this. Look at this. We have this double slash, right? So we need to fix that. for that just go to your code editor just go to a donate page and here just remove this slash where it is here it is remove this slash okay so let's also refactor our project and then we are going to redeploy the project and then we are going to test the donation cool so basically i found some bug which is related to this snap bar i am on the stats page right so if i just refresh 
look at this this is changed to family and that is because just go to navbar.tsx and here i need to wrap this i need to wrap this anchor tag with the link but i wrap the link with the anchor tag okay so that's a problem so let's fix that I need to wrap this anchor tag with the link okay so let's change this and now it's fine it should work and the second thing is we have some UI related issues not issues actually but we can do a better job and that is inside this family look at this I have this family and friends but the friends should have a, a white color right so let's fix that just go to family.tsx and here just use this text yellow fine and then we can do a better job to render this image we can actually make a border around this image but the problem is in next image the rounded border does not work so we need to use a trick let's inspect and then just go to elements just click on this image and look at this this div which is automatically created by the next image so you can target this div and then apply the border so for that just go to code editor look at this we have a wrapper div here this wrapper div so basically let's put a class here nice so you can target this image wrapper right so just copy this image wrapper and now just go to global.css and let's target this image wrapper we need to target a direct div so for that just use this arrow and then div fine so let's use a border width of 3 pixel and then border radius is 50 percent and then the third thing is border color so border color this is a yellow one right so just copy this from this tailwind config.js just copy this yellow color let's go to global css put this here nice save this and i think our refactory is done so again just make a commit git commit minus am refactored push this to the main branch so git push i'm on the main branch yep git push and it should be pushed to the main branch the code is pushed to the main branch and now just go to your virtual just go to your virtual account mm -hmm. just click on the save walter okay click on this deployment you should see a deployment which is going on look at this look at this commit message which is refactored okay you don't need to set up the environment variables again don't worry about that okay ready 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 just go to save walter the previous url which is the save walter dot virtual dot app the zip phrase and this is the updated version okay just go to stats let's see if the bug is fixed or not just refresh and yep this is still in the stats so the bug is fixed just go to family and look at this we have a border around this image and our friends is also in white and now let's try to make a donation just go to donate let's set one dollar uh, first of all let me check the last donation just go to stats is it five dollar right so let's select one dollar click on paypal mm -hmm. tip to click on pay now and i guess that donation is done just go to stats look at this the last donation john one dollar so that's all for this video that's all for this project if you have faced any problem during the project please let me know in the comment section i'm super active in youtube okay so that's it please show some support by hitting the like button See you in the next video. Bye. Oh, by the way, guys, all the codes will be available in the description box. So if anything goes wrong in your code, just check that out. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.